560 WQAM presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, call 560 in Dade or Brown County or pound 560 AT&T Wireless Customer. 877-785-NEIL is a toll-free clear feelings express by Neil Rogers. His guests or callers does not reflect those of the Beasley Broadcast Group, its staff, advertisers, or agents. No. Now, the Neil Rogers Show on 560 QAM. It's Friday, you bastards. Oh, I don't know what it is about them, their whiny little voices, or their big noses, or goofy hats, tiny little schmeckles. I don't know, they just, they just rub me the wrong way. Anti-Semitism lives in every speech of love begins, it's in the news. Oh, 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 oh. Hillary hates you. Spewing hatred through the halls, Boston people's pops of all, it's in the news. Hillary hates you. You won't catch her light in a menorah. God, she must have a wonderful aura. When she speaks, I want to cry. She could use a good rabbi. It's in the news. Oi! Hillary hates you. Hello, 2560 WQM. Happy Friday, too. That's for our friend Roy down in Tavernier who faxed me this morning. A couple of things. Don't get chronic on a fax machine, Roy, but you're okay in our book. And there you go. There's a little something for you. Speaking of faxes, here's some uh, positive news for you. A marquee in Pompano on Federal at Sample Road says, Coming soon from Tampa, Mon Venus 2. My, my, my. Look out now. The building used to be the Crazy Horse. I thought the Crazy Horse was like, uh, was that a different Crazy Horse? It was. Crazy Horse was Biscayne in about 168th or 9th or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. A male strip club. Right. Oh, yeah, Shirley Tweeters used to talk about that all the time. Shirley Tweeters, who then became a psychic, became a whatever the hell she, what was the name? You got no. Remember that phony name? Well, you I, don't, start, I don't watch the, you uh, better this clue, start keep my track psychic. of all these psychic names, because once we start our psychic stock network line, I don't want to mention no names, but once we start that, Better. what is it? Nothing. So anyway, uh, that's pretty exciting, Mons Venus too. but I wouldn't get too excited because, uh, you know, they'll probably be open about two, three weeks, uh-huh. and they'll start busting all over the place. For example, court halts crackdown on Atlantis. There's more good news. Oh! But the old farts in Fort Lauderdale and the powers that be never to be turned say, well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll find some other way to do it, you know, the under-21 uh, thing. Now, what's the name of this guy? Mike Kent. Not Norm K- Norma Kent, but Mike Kent, owner of a club Atlantis. He says the under-21 law is the screw Atlantis ordinance. He says the city selectively enforces it against him, and he can prove it. He says, hopefully their coffers are deep enough because I'll pay for the legal. The city has the opportunity to deal with businesses like this. It's called condemnation or eminent domain. That's what they should be doing if they want to be for a different purpose. How do you like that? But they're trying to put them out of business because they don't want no uh, whippersnappers over there. And it's been that way for uh, a long time. Ever since they decided to say bye, bye, bye to the spring breakers long, long time ago. Bye, bye, bye. And then, of course, you know, they'll say, we know this 19-year-old kid that jumped out of the end of the pool and got killed a couple days ago. They'll say, see, there you go. But the point is that, you know, that can happen anytime. I mean, it used to happen a lot because drunken college kids do crazy things. Yeah. So let's just throw the baby out with the bathwater and put everybody out of business. How about putting up some condos for old people? What do you say? Right there on the beach, on prime beachfront property. They already did that down by the Gulf Ocean Mile all the way down there. That used to be really happening uh, part of Fort Lauderdale Beach. Is it anymore? No, no. Old, geriatric, decrepit, just like they did on Miami Beach many years ago when they turned all that beachfront property over to the old farts for those condos. So the median age there is death plus 100. Even if they brought back, if they took Meyer Lansky out of the box, he'd be like a teenager compared to most of the people living there on Collins Avenue. So there you go. That's what they want. They like old people, okay, because all you young people, you create too many problems. Too many drug problems, too many people having a good time, too many naked people running around, too much flesh. We don't like that here in South Florida. Too many fags, maricones, all these things. Pete the Chronic Board Op. Remember that song by Peter, Paul, and Mary? Pete the Chronic Board Op. So whatever happened with Puff Daddy? Did we get a, uh, didn't get a verdict yet? No, I guess not. Don't look too good like they're going to nail him, though. Because they said the case against him is just like the case against Joe Carroyo. Weak. Weak. 
like that tea he was brewing. Like Al Martino's voice in The Godfather. Wink. Uh, be a man. So anyway, Pete the Chronic board up. In fact, uh, sends me these uh, pictures of where his kid goes to school. I mean, this is embarrassing. These are like portable, uh, yeah, portables, they call them. I call them like Quonset huts, shacks, the sugar shack, without the sugar. Look at that. No turlets, no nothing. And there was a fax here somewhere with it, or a letter, whatever the hell. Yeah, I got so much crap here, I can't keep uh, track of the crap, including that caustic fax about your good friend Rimmer, Rimmer the psychic uh, hockey nut. Oh, here it is. Says here. I hope the tax dollars. Here's the tax dollars that work. My son goes to school here, Flanagan High in Pembroke Pines, ninth grade annex. All porta potties, the entire effing school. He says a disgrace. And Frank Motek said hello. How you doing, Frank? Wherever you are. I guess he's out on the West Coast. So thanks, Pete, the chronic board up because that's, uh, there you go. And does anybody care? No. And I'll tell you the reason they care. Marlins head for the river. What a great, I love that headline on the Sun Sentinel. Marlins head for the river. Don't jump too soon, uh, John Henry, but. Bye, bye, bye. And we'll send you an anchor. Two great pieces of news from Tallahassee. Speaking of that, panel defeats limits on class size, of course, because it would cost $2 billion, you know because they'd have to build new schools and all of that. And uh, right beneath that, Senate budget restores cuts in education. All right. Hear it. But somewhere along the line, we're going to come up with uh, like a billion dollars for John Henry so we can build another billionaire play toy, because it's going to cost about $400 million for the stadium itself. And then the city supposedly, if they go ahead with this thing, is it's going to cost uh, land acquisition, construction, and related expenses could run as high as $521 million. So it's really going to be like you know close to a billion by the time they get done. Always is with all the cost overruns, et cetera. And is John Henry putting that money out? No. No. Let's spend a billion dollars. We've got kids going to school in porta potties. We can't afford to limit the class sizes because that's going to cost money that we don't have, and we've got to cut, make all kinds of cutbacks, especially on education. This state, man, is a freaking disgrace. But I don't want to get started on a Friday with negativity, do we? We want to do that? Uh-huh. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Let's keep it light. Keep it happy, okay? Keep them laughing. Keep them smiling, especially with us. Just like yesterday. Look at that. Look at that phone. See what I mean? I was thinking about coming to work this morning. This this is like like squeezing blood out of a bowling ball. Well, we already had a couple calls this morning. Saying what? Uh, they wanted basketball scores. <laughs> yeah, even Bluff comes in here. Muff comes in this morning. And Muff is hot. Oh, there, there he is again, by the way. What? The basketball I think that's score? the guy. QAM, sports line. Oh, no, I want to talk to Neil. Oh, speaking. Hey, Neil. Yeah, that was a you, joke. Uh, are you are you still looking for a good chocolate malted? Am I looking for it? Well, you we were talking about a chocolate I'm malted. I'm still looking for it, not necessarily the malted, yeah. Okay, well, maybe you can get that, too. But at Johnny Rockets, be surprised, they actually make a good chocolate malted. Where's that? There's one in the falls. It's a chain. Pizza there is a hamburger place. That's hold on. What is it? It's a chain. It's like a uh, 50s hamburgers chain. Uh, Johnny Rockets. I know there's one. There's a, there's one in the Falls. I know that there's one. Well, I'm not, going, I'm not going to the Falls for a chocolate malt. Well, I'm I have to have my they, head examined. They have them in other. They have them That'd in other. Uh, I take another uh, stock tip from Rimmer. I'd have to be institutionalized if I did that. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, but they they do have it. I think there's one up even in uh, Sawgrass. Oh, is there in the Sawgrass? I think there's a Johnny Rockets what? up there. Car wash. Yeah, no, no car wash. Can't afford it. Okay, we'll find out. Thanks a lot, pal. Okay. Okay. Oh, and guess what? I got very bad news, though. See, I don't want to start unloading all the bad news, you know? Although the good news, Mon Venus is coming. Oh! A lot of uh, guys may be coming, but you better do it fast because they'll close it down. But uh, the bad news is that they got uh, the drive through at my steak and shake there by the sawgrass. All Schwarzers in the uh, drive through part. Inside, they got, like, you know, nice white young people in there. But I guess maybe probably for me because they don't want me talking about any names on here and checking the name tags out, which I won't. I mean, they're very nice people, and they're very efficient. They give you the right order. You don't order a cheeseburger with onion and wind up getting a chicken sandwich with uh, mayonnaise and lettuce. I mean, you know, which is what the Sparchers have done to most of the fast food joints, especially like uh, Wendy's and Burger King. Anybody in this audience ever go through the drive through at Wendy's or Burger King in the last year or two and get what you ordered? No. No. Never happened. Ever. It's like has, you know, American Airlines ever arrived anywhere on time in the last five years. They had a great piece on MSNBC last night about the airlines and what a disgrace, all the stuff that's going on, and uh, Delta, they ripped them and asked, did you see the thing about Midwest, uh, what is yeah. it called? And they ripped uh, America worse, too, which I love. You see that crappy guy at the counter, that yeah. attitude? 
Midwest, um, geez, which I would never fly because we don't live in the Midwest. It doesn't go anywhere we go. They got you by the balls, and they know it, and they act like So our luck, you know, the one really great domestic airline is that Midwest uh, something or other. Somebody will call and tell whatever, and uh, we're not going on it because it's uh, not for us. That, that's the price you pay for being here in this goddamn place. Don't start on that negative. Uh, let's be a positive, okay? It's uh, St. Patty's Day coming up tomorrow. Let's all march in the parade. Let's all mince and uh, you do our little leprechaun thing. Put on those, uh, yeah, put on those tights. All those good heterosexual Irishmen with those tights on. Yeah. What the hell was that? What was what? The sounds of silence. Look, it's Lucky, the little green leprechaun. Quick, let's get him. He's got the kinky charm. Oh, the raptor is kinky charm. A lustful and nutritious way to start the day. Just look what's inside. White chain, blue whip, red handcuffs, and pink heart with green leather clovers. I can't let them catch me. I'm going to get away. Oh, oh we got you. <laughs> oh, 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 don't pattern me behind with this uh, hairbrush. Faster and faster and faster. Get the hairbrush. Oh, no. you got to be punished oh. for not oh. eating your lunch oh. and dinner. Oh, oh, no, don't, don't, don't stop. Oh. Oh. I hate the Irish. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to say. Boy, this thing is uh, getting temperamental. 1016 at 560 WQM Subaru and WQM presents our 2001 College Hoops Hysteria Contest. Do we care about this? I started to say before, Muff comes in here and he starts talking to me about, the, oh, yeah, these college basketball games. Boy, that one is pretty. I love it when these underdogs. I said, I don't really care. No interest. Don't care. No, I, I don't. I just don't care about it anymore. I just uh, have no interest. I'm not going to fake it. College. Terminal. Basketball. Terminal. Just like I'm in the car last night. I'm going to the store, and I've got the booster on, orange head, and he's like, oh, the 12 beat the 5. <laughs> you know, he's doing his uh, rock and roll DJ sports crap. Huh? The 12 beat the 5. I thought I was listening to the Fat Rich. Oh, I had the four over the 278, and the seven made a break and a stretch, and Pavia jumped over the hub rail, and Wally uh, pulled back, and, you know, the 12 beat the five. Aren't you impressed by that? Don't you want to know that, that the 12 beat the five? Come on. You you know, stop being such a goddamn hard-ass spick, will you? You better, uh, you know, loosen your load a little bit. Yeah. I shouldn't have to say that to him. I've never seen anybody take a crap more than this man. Seriously, you for a little guy, you crap more than anybody I've known in my life. A lot, yeah. And you don't even have irritable bowel. Maybe no. you're developing irritable bowel from eating all that garbage, speaking of crap that Petey Lenny brings in here. I never eat anything that he brings in here. Yeah, but you have. Don't you remember the day that you were like, <laughs> for hours, and then went home and still the continued time. chapter yeah, two I learned. and four? Yeah. I learned my lesson. And then he brings you those... Now, now let me ask you this. Talk about... I don't want to say because today he's, in his, he's getting his thing uh, removed or whatever. He's getting some kind of a nodule removed. So I, you know, we wish him the best of luck on that, and maybe they'll work on his brain, too, if they can find it. But he, bring, he brings in these uh, syrups, these low-cal... Uh, I said, well, what the hell is that for? Ice cream? Well, what, what's the point of putting low-cal uh, syrups on ice cream? That's like getting a small diet soda with a banana split. I mean, well, you know, what's the point of that? Jesus Christ, P.D. Lenny. I mean, do you have any brains at all? No. Yeah, and then so anyway, he bought, he puts those two big uh, containers of the stuff, and sure enough, I come in yesterday morning, which I begged him, get that stuff out of here, we don't want it, and I look on the list, and the first ingredient in both of the water, and the second one is sorbitol, sorbitol. Yeah. So they both went where they belong in the Schmidt can. See, I thought at least one of them was chocolate, but they weren't. It had something to do with chocolate, yeah, but not the kind you're thinking about. Subaru and WQM presents our 2001 College Hoops Hysteria Contest. Log into WQ or onto or around WQM.com and start making your selections for today's round one games of the NCAA tournament. You have till noon today to get your first round Friday picks in. Friday picks, it's like today's games, get it? Prizes will be given away after each round, and the grand prize winner walks away with $1,000 in cold, hard cash. Courtesy of Subaru and Sports Radio 560 QAM. See, the reason I have to read this a lot is because I'm sure they promised the Subaru people a lot of like plugs on the air, like our sales department probably charged them an arm and a leg for it. You know? uh -huh. Yeah, 
probably they're not getting anything else in return because that's one of the big scams that our sales department loves to do, like during that golf tournament. You know, that's probably why they were asking me to make air checks of uh, your reading of that. Are you serious? Yes. Are you shitting yes. me? No. So they can prove to the client that yes. they actually got some mentions on it. Well, you should have told me that before we came on here, and I could have read it off the air. You could have taped it. <laughs> why would that be different than some of the other? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Then instead of reading it on the air. See, here's a tape of it, like that proves I read it on the air. Being my voice. Right. So anyway, thanks, Rick, for the good news about Monza Penis or whatever that thing is going to be up there in uh, Pompano, Federal and Sample Road. Well, wait a minute, Federal and Sample Road. Oh, no, that's not Federal. What's the, uh, um, the in Schwarzer Town there? I'm uh, coming home from the track all the time. Military but, Trail, Power Line. No, 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 in uh, Pompano. The, Lord, the What's the name of that place? The, the titty bar up there in the Pompano Cheetah Beach. Three. Cheetah 3, that's the one. Are there any, like, white people uh, live in that neighborhood? No. I mean, a lot of white customers I see, uh, you know, driving into that place. I don't see any that, white. That's a neighborhood? That, that's the hood, baby. That'd be the hood. I thought it was just, like, industrial What parts. a great lead into our poll question today. Great poll. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? I don't think that'll be uh, a tough poll. The polls? The Irish? Well, I'll give you the ones I have on my list, and I'm, I'm trying to, like, you know, make the list as broad as possible, so that, because if we make it too narrow, it's like I'm trying to lead people in the wrong direction, down the garden path, down the primrose lane. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? Cubans, African Americans, Haitians, Jews, or gays? Now, those are the only ones I could think to put on You've got to put, like, uh, you know, rednecks on there, trailer park trash crackers. Rednecks, okay, rednecks, good. Yeah, we've got to make this as broad as possible, because otherwise people will say, oh, you see, you're picking on, uh, you know, certain people again. I don't know what the result is going to be, do you? We don't have a whole lot of Italians down here, but there are No, Italians, Italians don't ruin neighborhoods. Well, you put people on there that don't ruin neighborhoods, like gays. Yeah, but the, but the, there's no prejudice against, don't you understand, there is no prejudice against Italians generally. Oh, and speaking of that, an unprecedented ecological battle between the Vatican and Italy heated up on Friday when the Italian Environment Minister Willie Borden, Willer Borden, boldly threatened to cut off the electricity supply to Vatican Radio. <laughs> Vatican Radio, which has been charged with breaking Italian laws on electromagnetic levels, said it was astonished by the threat, which would effectively pull the plug on the station, which broadcast Pope John Paul's words around the world. How do you like that? All right. If within 15 days the broadcaster does not get back down under the limits, I will order the national electricity provider to suspend supply to the transmission setters board and told a news conference. If the supplier continued to provide electricity, it too would be held responsible for committing a crime. Vatican Radio broadcast the Pope's propaganda, I mean speeches and events to the world in some 40 languages from a huge forest of antennae north of Rome where some groups have reported abnormally high levels of cancer. Oh, wow, just a coincidence, I guess. The transmission center, like Vatican City itself in the center of Rome, is on extraterritorial land and considered part of a sovereign state. Maybe that's why he and Fidel got along so well. They both like pumping up, uh, you know, those big transmitters and jamming 80 billion watts of propaganda. Borden said the National Agency for the Protection of the Environment had registered three times Italy's legal li uh, limit of electromagnetism uh, during one of Vatican Radio's evening broadcasts. Italy has slapped strict regulations on emission levels, the tightest in the European Union, after Vatican Radio had been set up 44 years ago. How do you like that? So they might cut off his uh, water. Squirt, squirt. And his power, too. Good. One of my Puerto Rican friends called up to remind me. Puerto Rican neighborhood? Puerto Ricans. Oh, okay. Okay, Puerto Ricans. I didn't know. I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever lived around any Puerto Ricans. I never lived in the Bronx. That's the only uh, Rican neighborhood I know. It would be around the, uh, the Orange Bowl. Ricans? Yeah. How about Jamaicans? There you go. Like well, this neighborhood. Th I'm just going to say, this neighborhood here do not be too good. This would be a pretty trashy neighborhood here. Pretty crappy. Although by comparison. No. I, it's worse. By comparison to what? Overtown. Liberty City. Are, are you trying to, like, stack this? No, no, now? not me. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? And don't be blaming other people for moving out, okay, when you move in. If you live like crap, if you're like a trash meister, if you live like some kind of a slob, subhuman scum. Uh, Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, African Americans, Haitians, Jews. Oh, there he goes with the Jews again. Gays or rednecks who love incest. So how did the poll come yesterday, speaking of uh, ethnicity and that kind of stuff? 
Which of Neil's comments piss you off the most? None of his comments piss me off. A shocking 70% out of 1,056. 740 said, none of you. None of your comments piss me off, which I'm uh, tickled to death. His comments about Orthodox Jews, that was the uh, leading one, though. 84, 7.9%, but it got a good uh, battle there toward the end. His comments about religion, Oy. 72, or 6.8%. His comments about blacks, 54, 5.1%. His comments about politics, 45, 4.2%. His comments about <laughs> guns, 44, 4.1%. And last, and way in the, uh, in the rear of this, Rectum. way in the behind was his comments about Cubans. 16 or 1.5 percent. Someone reminded me about the gypsies. There are no gypsy neighborhoods. Yeah, we do. We do. I don't know about neighborhoods, but we have gypsies here in South Florida. We have gypsy neighborhoods. I don't know about the neighborhood, but we have gypsies. Yeah, and they I hear, do destroy. I hear some of them live in Coral Springs, and I heard a rumor that the gypsy cried right there on the sofa. Twenty-six past the ten. I'm not putting gypsies. I you say, oh, there are not enough of them to make a. Of course, a per- to make a, a minion. They don't congregate down here. See now, when I put the Jews on there, I should put Orthodox Jews, shouldn't I? Because Jews don't ruin a neighborhood. I mean, Orthodox Jews. They ruin neighborhoods. Sure. They throw stones at the uh, uh, less Orthodox, and they like uh, sure, sure. That and they, Sterling Road area there. <laughs> that's pre- pretty nice. They're all orthodox there. How about on Miami Beach? How about on, uh, what is it, Washington Avenue? Haven't been there in a Coons age. age. Well, I'm putting, a, or, uh, whatever your name is, Eric, when you get to the Jew part on there, put orthodox Jew. Since they're already pissed off about me picking on them too much, and since this is a weekend poll and they can't, you know, at least on the Shabbos part, starting at sundown tonight, they can't dick with our poll, you know? Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, African Americans, Haitians, Orthodox Jews, gays, or rednecks? I like it. Hey, hang this up, baby. Boy, that was a great show, bro. Thanks, man. But to be honest with you, you stink. What? Well, faith in the good a lot. After 72 cities in four hours a night, don't you think it's about time you had yourself a shower? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I've got just the soap for you. No, Irish Springsteen. <laughs> it's the boss of the order and truth. Hey, hey, hey. Strong enough for a sweaty roadie. But I like it too. Please, USA. Irish Springsteen. Now you won't be smelling like New Jersey anymore. Speaking of uh, smelling like something, uh, we got two more uh, lists here, or two more uh, categories for our pool. Mexicans and Nicaraguans, and that's it. I think that, I mean, that's a whole bunch now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 11 different categories, you know, of people that you want to keep as far away from you as possible. Well, I mean, not necessarily, but just from our hood. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? I mean, like lightning. Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, African Americans, Haitians, Orthodox Jews, Oy. gays, rednecks, Mexicans, or Nicaraguans. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. Oh, see, he already had that pull up there. Nice going, Eric. But we got to add those last two on there because I didn't realize we had that many Mexicans. I know we have many Nicaraguans here. Uh-huh. We have a lot of Mexicans uh, here. Are, do you know that for a fact, or did somebody call you in to make that up? Somebody who's pissed off about El Cinco de Mayo. Well, we'll find out. Here's a call in Weston. Hello. Good morning. Yes, sir. Um, you know, first of all, you your psychic abilities once again you mentioned that george for a little guy spends a lot of time running off there to the restaurant yes he does and now are you a are we sure that it's, it's just not that he's full of schmidt or b that he's really going there to go to the bathroom i don't know what he's doing in there but he sure spends a lot of time in all the right. toilet all right well that brings me to the top news story as i turned on channel seven news this morning by mistake yes was the broken sewer pipe at the mouth of the miami river all right happen? Any coincidence with the fact that they suggested the Miami River location? For <laughs> I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Wow. Maybe he's opening up the concession stands already, and that's, you know, he's just figuring pumping raw sewage is about the same deal here. So. Yeah. 
Um, so that that's, well, at, least, at least this Schmidt they don't cost us all that money anyway. That, well, that's right, and it's interesting. You know, they were talking about how um, oh, all these spring breakers, you know, that are down. You know, and Julia Tuttle said they they're trying to close beaches. Julia Tuttle South, but I figure. First of all, those kids, they'll have no clue anyway because they'll be so drunk by the time they get out to the beach anyhow. They mm-hmm. won't recognize We don't that. want any young people here. Don't make any mistake about it. South Florida hates young people. That's the right. ones who live here, the ones who visit here, we hate young punks. We can't stand it. We want nice old people who are safe. We'll just shovel uh, crap right up on the beach just to keep them away for that. Matter. No, we'll just let the old people loose out there with their colostomy bags. <laughs> when in doubt, squeeze it out. Squeeze it out. Now, you mentioned, you were also mentioning how... Or we'll just send them over to the Miami River, to the bank. There you go. Um, but uh, the NCAA tournament, which, of course, is a huge sporting event. And of course, yeah, no interest. You are sports radio. You know how you have to be... No interest. ...intensive. But look at the, hip- the hypocrisy about, you know, how the NCAA comes out and how they have this big issue about how they really don't want to promote gambling for college sports. Yet they're, <laughs> yeah, they're offering... Free email and pager and alphanumeric digital phone updates of scores. Uh-huh. Now, who needs to get a pager score? Oh, no, that's only for serious fans that are concerned about that's their exactly score. That's exactly what they say. They say people, <laughs> yeah. people who want to know what the scores that happen. Right. Not because they might have, you know, a couple of bucks on the game or something like that. But And then I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of hiding in my house over here. You know, you ha- I have a timer on my sprinkler system, right? And the timer on the sprinkler system hasn't worked for months. And so I have to go out and early in the morning. You have to go out and do it manually. Manually, yeah. exactly. So now they've restricted it to Monday and Wednesdays for the for the address, you know, that I'm odd number address or whatever. Oh, but it's coming worse than that. It's going to be once a week now. Once a week, exactly. So today, by sheer out of the blue, the damn thing starts working. And it originally was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So all of a sudden, my sprinkler's going off this morning. When I, you know... Uh, but at a wrong time, exactly at a wrong time because the thing hasn't been working, the timer's all screwed up. As I'm coming back in from being out running an errand, I see a public service commission vehicle roaming the neighborhood. Uh-huh. So I'm hiding, looking out the window, and I'm just going to tell the guy if he comes over here and says, hey, your water seems to be wet, I'm just going to tell him my dog has a urinary tract infection and just been peeing all over the place. Sounds like a hose job to me. <laughs> see you later. Good luck to you, pal. Bye. Five six seven oh five sixty. Look at this. Two votes so far, so nobody's going to know which one I voted for. Yeah, because the thing, Eric just got the whole poll up there. One for Orthodox Jews and one for African Americans. You'll never know which one I voted for. I mean, you may think you know which one I voted for, but you'll never, ever know, will you? Five six seven oh five sixty pound 560 on the AT&T. I mean, this is, it's just criminal. It's criminal what goes on in this country, and then nobody wants to talk about it, and everybody's like real tight-lipped about it. The only thing they do is move real fast, you know. They get on the phone to their real, real realtor, and that's uh, it. Okay. Oh, they just moved in. Sell. Get me out of here. You know, real fast. But nobody wants to talk about it because it's not polite to do it. Well, what the hell not? Oh, look at that dive. The market is taken again. Yeah. That consumer confidence thing. University of Michigan, I always told you, with all due respect to Tommy Brady and my friend Mad Dog Bandage, yeah. University of Michigan uh, consumer confidence thing, uh, uh, too much bad weed in Ann Arbor. Who cares about that crap? Here's a little piece of advice for you in a book that I read last night from one of these uh, experts, one of these pervert experts. He said, don't ever try to time the market. That's what he said. Just sit tight, as painful as it may be, as gut-wrenching as it may be, just, just, don't, just turn the damn thing off. And, uh, you know, what goes down will come back up. Do we believe him? Maybe. That's what I'm going to do. I'm riding it out, man. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, yo. Yes, sir. Love your show. I see you every day religiously. Uh, let me ask you, Neil, did you hear the thing about uh, Castro, uh, a nominee for the Nobel Prize? Yeah, how do you like that? Are, are, they, are, they, they, are they doing drugs there in Switzerland? It's just insane. I mean, what is this country coming to? And in regards to your poll... I, I wonder if they brought Hitler back, if they'd make him the, uh, give him a Nobel Prize. <laughs> That's exactly the first thing that came into my mind. I and, said, and I wonder how come the Cubans are uh, having a nervous breakdown about this. I'll probably on uh, Radio Mambi in those days, they're probably uh, smoking uh, the w- wicked stuff this morning. I mean, I, I was just... I, probably I, I smoking the know. newspaper, El Nuevo Herald. Yeah, I didn't know what to say. The you know, Diary of the America. What is it? In regards to your poll today, I think, uh, in general... I think it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's unfair, but I'm saying that if we're going to put all different nationalities, 
we might as well put in uh, the Pakistanis and the Orientals. But we don't have. Uh, well, why would Orientals ruin the neighborhood? You mean Asian? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're not. They're not. But the thing is that we all know how the Pope's gonna go. We all know that. Out huh? the west, they uh, have that. But, but we don't have uh, those people here. We do have some Pakistanis. Well, but, uh, yeah, but they, but you gotta have cab drivers <laughs> and convenience store owners. That's true, Neil. Okay, give me some Parliament lights. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, have okay. a nice day, sir. Me Bye-bye. too. Now, what were you just saying? Out west, apparently they're having the same kinds of problems. You mean like in Sweetwater? Oh, you mean way out west? Yeah. They have an illegal immigration problem out there on that coast. Yeah, of course they the do. The Asians. Well, what are they doing, coming all the way across the Pacific? I don't <laughs> yeah. think so. Yeah. Huh? The tankers, trawlers, full of them. Absolutely. Boat loads? Every day, yes. Now you're stealing risk material. Thousands, thousands a day. Huh. Well, good. Now we feel better about it. Why should it just be us in the Texas? Right. Maybe that's why they're having all those earthquakes in California. Maybe there's like too much weight, you know, like on a plane. Although I understand that many of the people in San Francisco float. So if your toes aren't on the ground, that can't be responsible. Don't blame us for it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. Another dreary thing on that phone again today, boy. It's just so ponderous, trying to squeeze. I'm squeezing the bowling ball. I'm squeezing it. I'm pressing it. I feel like old Eddie Kowalik's, you know, Thurman Gibson, Buddy Bomar. That's it. Now we're gonna start doing old bowling guys. Sure. I think those are the only ones that I can remember. I don't know any other ones. Two more than I can name. Oh boy, Dick Weber. There you go. Probably a couple of other dicks in there. Yeah, did I say Thurman Gibson? Did I say that? Uh-huh. Left-hander. Marty Perino. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just came to guzzle Pepsi while I'm free. <laughs> I still be. But I can't because I'm under it. Hey, hey. You might think it's wrong to sell out in this way, but it's now I'm richer than I was before. Empty's made me a teenager, so Jim will follow me right to the door. Yeah. And the minor ought to be Hey, hey Way to go, let me go Don't care if it tastes like tea Ew, ew Ew, you're cool like me You'll drink it every day Until I'm richer Then God can tell Rectum. I am 47 at 560 WQM. Old bowlers, here's a fact. Don Carter. How could anybody forget Don Carter? About half the bowling alleys in America named after old Don. Johnny Patragli, which I never heard him. Here's one that I just remembered. Buzz Fazio. Anybody remember him? Uh-huh. Sure. Old bowlers. Drought hammers Florida's marijuana crop. Here's some very bad news for you. You better uh, start moving into a Jamaican neighborhood, man. Drug eradication efforts got a boost from Mother Nature in Florida, where a severe drought has stunted the illegal marijuana crop, the floor of the FDLE said on Tuesday. Law enforcement agency seized 39,219 marijuana plants, worth $39.2 million from around the state in 2000, about 30% less than the previous year and the lowest number in 20 years. If you think you're having trouble keeping your lawn alive, imagine trying to covertly water an entire marijuana plot, FDLE agent David Broadway told the Orlando Sentinel. David Broadway. Mother Nature has played a big part in the scarcity of the domestic crop this year, he said. Meteorologists said 2000 was the driest year on record in Florida, where most residents are under water use restrictions, outdoor burning bans, and wildfire alerts. Marijuana plants generally have short roots 
and need lots of water, Broadway said. See, I got short roots. I can relate to that. 92 votes already in our survey, and our survey says, which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? I mean, like lightning, like greased lightning. 92 votes. African Americans have 42. Rednecks 11, Haitians 10, Puerto Rican 7, Cuban 6, Jamaican 6, Orthodox Jews 6, Oy. Gays 3, Nicaraguans 1, and Mexicans. Oh. Wait, I don't have any Mexicans here. They're in Leisure City, Homestead, Peron. Oh, let them lose their souls. Huge what? camps of them. Well, they're Picking not, grapes? They didn't start as Lettuce, camps. pray. Right, tomatoes, strawberries. Yeah. Well, somebody's got to do it. No, right. we don't have any Mexicans here. I think you're making that up. Uh, the 500 people called in. Uh, well, then they yeah, must be nice there. neighbors because they don't have any votes on there now. Actually? Yeah. I mean, they're safe neighbors. They invite you over for maybe a uh, refried bean or two here and there? They're not going to commit crime on you, generally speaking. Are they safe? They're safe. See, I'm going to tell you right now, we need to bring in busloads of Chinese people. Okay. No? Why not? They're safe. I like Chinese. They're, I love Chinese. Let's play it. Well, you want to play it? No. Oh, sorry, Rick. Oh, seriously, uh, Chinese people are wonderful people, and they're like ethics and morality, and like, and yeah, there are Chinese gangs, like there's gangs and everything, like punks, you know. But, but generally speaking, the Chinese are very educated and very uh, polite and very. Uh, yeah, you're overgeneralizing. You're what? talking about the city Chinese. The rural Chinese are very backwards and uh, antiquated. No, and no, I'm talking about Chinese balls. people who are, come here. I'm not yeah. talking about Chinese in China. What, what rural Those are the Chinese refugees. People? They're being oppressed. And, uh, what rural Chinese? Like in uh, Montana? Where, where, where are you talking rural about? Rural China. It's huge. But they're we're not, not talking about cities. Chinese people in rural China. Those they're are not the coming here. Come here. No, they're not. Okay. The rural Chinese people are the ones who come here? Large portions of them, yes. And open up uh, all these great Chinese restaurants? Not them. Oh. Well, what do they do? You, you haven't seen any of those reports on the West Coast that what they do, what wait, they want to do is pick wait, ice. Wait, wait, wait. On the West Coast. Right. We're not talking, we're talking about here. We have barely any here. That's what I'm saying. I said we need to bring in busloads of nice Chinese people. Not the kind of like uh, sewer rats you're talking about, whoever they are. Well, that's I'm talking about, which is most of the Chinese people. There. Those are the refugees. Over the where? Refugees, on the West like Coast? On the West well, Coast. all the dregs are on the West Coast, you know? The hell with them. Let's worry about us. They eat tiger balls. Well, they, so there's something good there. Somebody's got to eat tiger balls. Yeah. Maybe they like golf. I don't know. Five six seven oh five sixty pound. No, seriously, we could use tons of Chinese people here. And they, they're very friendly. A little uptight mm -hmm. in, the fur, in the beginning, but once you loosen them up a little. No, seriously, and of course, uh, I don't want to get into it. 109 votes so far, and African Americans are running away. No, actually, it's the white people that are running away <laughs> from all of the above. See, that's bad, but you can call us bigoted and all these other things. But, see, people don't move out of a neighborhood just because they're afraid of. Uh, they're afraid that their property value is going to go down, the quality of life is going to go down, there's going to be crime, it's going to turn into a toilet. That's why people move out. And then other people point the finger and say, hey, you be bigoted, man, you be bad. And, of course, that's not true necessarily. Kind of like a chicken in the egg question. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. A very weak response here on the phone today about anything. These people are in la la land again. I got such a headache. It was from eating that omelet this morning. That thing was crap. What? Hey, I don't care. Make it no sweat off my ass. I don't need no omelet. I can buy my own goddamn. I don't need anything anyway. Keep drinking all those milkshakes from Steak and Shake, or they have the Schwarzers in the drive-through. You see how it's kind of like a spreading thing? I don't want to sound like some kind of old bigoted racist here on the air, but, I mean, isn't there any place where there are, like, just white people besides Denmark? Mm -hmm. No, no, you don't know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And Coral Gables? I mean, there's got to be someplace else. Mm -hmm. Where? Montana. No, I don't, I'm talking about a place where people would want to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say the North Pole. Too. I don't want to be in Montana. Maybe you want to be in Montana. I, do. I don't. Right well, now. go up to Shelby, Montana. No, in not fact, Shelby. You'll see all of Boone's relatives, the of this you'll see all of relatives up there with the orange prairie. hair. Prairie. Why would you be in the middle of a prairie with tumble rhymes with Mary? you got to get to the mountains. Here's a mobile implantation. Hello. Hello. Yes. How are you? Great. Hey, you're the only guy that talks to Honest on the air. I never uh, called before. As a matter of fact, I've only been listening for a week. Really? Yeah. But I love your show. Of course. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why are blacks better in sports? Why are they better in sports? Uh-huh. 
Well, I don't know, because they've been learning to uh, train to run fast, because they've been chased a lot. You know, oh, back, during the, back during the days when they had the lynchings, we taught them how to run like a mother. And when you were taught, when you were speaking last week, yeah. like I said, I'll only be listening for a week, right? You thought I told them about shipping them back to Africa? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I'm not saying we should do it. I'm just saying I love sure, it. Sure, sure you are. You're saying we ought to do it. Now, see, <laughs> no, see, I, see, I said it, but you don't have the balls to say it. What I'm saying we to have you. Like, a lot of okay, black let's people. Back we have a lot of black people listen to this show. Heard and the people, the, radio. the black people who listen to this show, they can stay here. And as long as they're nice, we'll interview them. And if they're friendly and nice, they can stay. But all the rest of them, I mean, it's just one of those things. We don't have room for them here. And they multiply too fast. Well, anyway, I love your show. Like I said, I've been listening for only for one week. But I've been listening every day since. There you go. Can I get, uh, tell you a joke? No, we don't do jokes, but wait, have, wait, a great, wait, have, a great, have a great weekend. Get out of here. Don't do jokes. On the fax machine, we do jokes so I can preview them, and if they're amusing, I'll do them. Midwest Express is the name of that airline I was trying to think of earlier. I forgot to mention that. According to MSNBC, it's a great airline. Does it fly anywhere here? No. Do we, uh, does it do any good for us unless you're in the Midwest? No. But it's a great airline, and they serve great food like on Real China, even in Coach. I, I think if I uh, caught the drift of that piece last night, they don't even have a first class. Everything is first class. It's all the same. Big wide seats, great service, fancy schmancy food, silverware like real china and real silver. And then they show Delta with a goddamn uh, trail mix. You know, I mean, that's just. And what's the other one that they call the, uh, not the Happy Meal, but the, the little box? I think, it's, I think that's Delta. Maybe it's American. Where the, the Porsche oh. is in coach, they have the. Uh, the fun pack. The no, fun the pack, something the, meal. Uh, Light lunch, it's something. Yeah, the upchuck lunch, or in, in a little box. And as you're getting on a plane, the people in coach they have to take this little box. Here, here's, uh, here it is. We just charge you like 800 bucks to fly 200 miles, and here's, uh, here's a box with some stale crackers in it and a couple of nuts, which I already brought my own. Thank you. I mean, what the hell is that? What kind of garbage is that? Soak in the goddamn public, you airline people. You suck. That's what I just want to say right now. There's some good airlines, like my friends at Air Canada and Martin Scare and a couple of others, although those are, those are not domestic airlines. Is there really a good domestic airline besides Midwest, Midwest Express, which I never heard of till last night. I'll have to take their word for it, you know. I'll have to assume it's the MS, NBC. But is there really such a thing? I mean, getting place on time. I'm not getting on the airline for great food because it's not going to happen anyway, unless you're flying Alitalia in first class. Not even business class anymore. In first class for like, you know, eight grand or something. Forget about it. Because it's all a monopoly. It's all crap. And they have all these, they bring on all these shows and all this. Bistro box. The, thank you, the bistro box. Thank you, Woody Graber. Because I call it the barfstro box is what I call it. The bistro bag. The, yeah. the bistro bag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Hey, be sure to take your bistro bag with that wonderful food in it. Before you go back and sit in those little tiny seats that were, you know, invented for five-year-old kids with tiny asses. Oh, Jesus. But I have uh, very few complaints because, like I said, I've been very lucky flying mostly international uh, carriers. And most of them are pretty good. I mean, Martin Air, for as cheap as they are, i got to tell you, they're pretty good. I've had, you know, a couple of frustrating experiences, but generally speaking, as one who flies about four million times a year, I have few complaints. But with these domestic carriers, like America Worst, they should only have wicked diarrhea for about six months. And the Bee Gees should be right there with them, too. It's Friday, you bastards. Feeling down in blue? Try all new Dublin gold. Green stems. Brown suits. Yellow chips. Surprisingly, I'm loose for a Oh, that's really cool, man. Hey, is that ground up clovers? Try it from the pastures of County Cork. We call it County Cork Cannabis. Hey, man, this stuff is great. Is that a leprechaun on the ceiling, man? Why, it is. And there's another one. And another one. And another one, too. Hey, I think you're right, man. The place is crawling with them. Try our new Dublin Gold. Surprisingly, I lose the legitimate. 1101 at 560 WQM. We got Jim Mad Dog Mandy. Yes. Yeah. In for Hank at 2 this afternoon. Hank's out there in Vegas, ostensibly for the NCAAs, but of course, to plunge his brains out and have a great time, and I'm sure he is. Geldy on game night, Hard Rock Cafe at 6. Panther preview at 7 o'clock tonight, the Penguins and the Panthers. That game looks like it'll be the only sellout of the year. Are they going to see the Panthers? No. They're going to see Mario. Eddie K after the hockey game. Am I going to that game tonight? No. No. A man once had an extremely bad case of hemorrhoids. He decided to go to the doctor who prescribed him some tablets to take. However, said the doctor, because this is such a severe case of hemorrhoids, these tablets will have to be given anally. Rectum. 
Thus said, the doctor uh, gave the, uh, the patient the tablet via the anus. Also, you'll have to have another one today at 7 o'clock, another one every 12 hours for the next week. The man thanked the doctor and went home. At 7 o'clock, his girlfriend was at his house. He asked her if she could give him the pill. She agreed and placed one hand on her boyfriend's shoulder and gave him the pill. With that, the man promptly screamed, Are you okay, honey? Did it hurt that much? No, it didn't hurt, replied the man. I just realized when the doctor gave me the pill, he put two hands on my shoulders. Rectum. Exactly. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon Wireless line. Don't forget one more time for this because clearance will get upset. Even though I have absolutely no interest, but our friends at Subaru do. Subaru and WQM presents our two thousand one college hoops hysteria contest. Are you hysterical? No. Log on to WQM.com and start making your selections for today's round one games of the NCAA tournament. You have till noon today to get your first round Friday picks in. Prizes will be given away after each round, and the grand prize winner walks away with $1,000 in cash courtesy of Subaru and Sports Radio WQM. I'm sure that Subaru is giving away like 995 bucks, and we're giving away like maybe 5 bucks. So you'll probably get the 995 real quick, and the other 5 bucks don't hold your breath. Here's Pompano. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Uh, real quick, a um, couple of old-timers, uh, Common Salvino uh-huh. and Billy Waylu. Right. Very good. Yeah. I think Billy Waylu is dead, I believe. Is he? I think so. Neil, did, uh, I was reading yesterday in USA Today. I, I think Carmen Salvino's dead, too, as a matter of fact, but anyway. <laughs> uh, I was reading yesterday's paper, uh, USA Today. Did you hear about the poor guy out in Las Vegas um, with the slot machine? No. Well, he was out there, and he was playing this progressive slot machine with a friend of his. And what happened is his friend asked him a question, and he turned, and he pulled the lever, and he came up, and he hit the mega bucks, mega bucks, mega bucks. Right. Only to find when the manager came that... You know how you have to put in, you know, a maximum. Oh no, 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 <laughs> so no, no, no! Oh no! Yeah, he, he only put in two coins instead of three. So you don't he get the won, third line. He would have won seven and a half million instead. He won ten thousand. Oh. Because he didn't put in three coins. Because his friend uh, yeah. uh, interfered and, uh, and distracted if, him. You know, and if I didn't know. You know what I, I would do to his friend? <laughs> yeah. Just like somebody gives you a bad stock tip, yeah. or uh, turns you out to a bad stockbroker. <laughs> If I didn't know better, I saw, I saw Defoe at Gulfstream. I would have thought it was Defoe and Kaplan out there. Probably. But, you know, and by the time again, you know, Hank's out there, so I hope it wasn't Hank. I'm sure not. But uh, anyway, I just know, want to relay that know. story to you. Okay, thanks for good news. Okay. Hank would know where to stick it in. Can, can you imagine that? I, like, like, you know, I mean, talk about stupid. You'll see people playing the Wheel of Fortune slots out there, and in order to have a chance to get the wheel, you have to have all three coins in. And they're putting in two coins or one coin. Are we ever going to get any spins? What's wrong with this goddamn thing? And they're, and they're sticking the money in there and like, uh, you know, morons, dumb. It says right on the, on the machines, you know, a uh, spin on the uh, third uh, wheel, yada, yada, yada. Uh, oh, God. Not that I'm any smarter because I'm out there playing the slots anyway. I'm just as dumb as they are, plunging my brains out. But at least I'm having a good time on like that stock market. Take another precipitous <laughs> drop today, but I don't care. Nothing I can do about it. Just sit back, be philosophical. Don't try to time the market. And don't buy bonds. No, seriously, according to this book, stocks outperform bonds and cash by like a zillion times over the years. That's what it says. So if it turns out not to be true in three or four years, I'll just find a guy that wrote it and just, uh, you know, shoot him in the leg. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. I want to give you the name of another old-time bowler, uh-huh. Lou Selaff from the Strohs team in Detroit. Never heard of him. And Fazio, uh, Buzz Fazio and Lou Selaff were on the Strohs team. They used to give exhibitions on Sunday mornings at the old Y7 uh-huh. in Detroit and yeah. the Polodrome. Great. That's it. Franklin Sears. Five six seven oh five sixty. Now we're back to the harness drivers. You can see I'm giving these names and they don't know which is uh, good. Confuse them. Keep them off balance. That's what I say. Who is that? Some old guy, some old fart. Okay, here's our last call. It's from out of town. It says Milwaukee. Hello. Neil, happy Friday. Same to you. Hey, uh, you were talking about Midwest Express. It's their hub up here in Milwaukee. Uh-huh. It is the best airline you'll ever travel on. Huh. The seat, there is no first class. All the seats are the same. The same. Uh, to the meals are actually good food. They sure got some great publicity on MSNBC last night. They did. Free, mm-hmm. uh, they give you free wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it just makes it a happy flight. If I'm going to fly over an hour. Well, what do they do? Like fly from Chicago to Milwaukee or things like that? No, they actually fly down to uh, the Dallas, uh, really? seasonally down to, I think, uh, Fort Myers and maybe Miami. 
No. But it's only seasonally. Oh, I see. Uh, I think they canceled after Easter. They mm-hmm. they only run it from in the winter months. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kansas City, um, you know, the, throughout the Midwest, honestly. But I mean, it is the best airline you'll ever take. If you're gonna fly there. over an hour, go Midwest Express. I guess I'll have to move there now. <laughs> Thanks for the. Why clue. would you want to leave paradise? Yeah, that's true. Good point. <laughs> take care, Neil. Thanks. Bye. Okay, we've got 75,000 open lines here, and I'm embarrassed for this audience again. This week has been really bad. I feel like a dentist this week. I've been yanking it, pulling it, squeezing it, and still can't get a response. What's wrong with these people? What is wrong with you folks? Here's our last call, Lady Mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, are you still doing the pool? The yeah. deal is doing. Yes, ma'am, we're still doing the pool. <laughs> Who ruined the neighborhood? <laughs> yes. Yes. Trailer park trash. <laughs> Trailer park trash. Redneck. Okay. Redneck. Okay. Thanks for okay. that. Okay. Trailer park trash. But then we got to have uh, them around for the Jerry Springer show. Not a call on the board, baby. That's it. Going home. I'm going home. I'm going to go to the Midwest and get on the, somewhere, anywhere in the Midwest, hop on that Midwest Express airline and just keep flying around eating there we go, good food, just having a lot of wine. That's it. I, I'm just not taking any more calls today. I mean, what's the point of this? The show is over. This audience is uh, dead. This happened, remember this happened yesterday too, like about 10.35. Here it's like 10 after 11. And the cat's got their tongue. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just uh, tired of your crap, you know. We're just uh, sick of, oh, Neil, what are we going to do? You're going to be leaving us soon. Uh, yeah, three years. We're going to be leaving us. What are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I brought this great new CD. Let's just play the whole thing. Yeah, but day. don't you miss this during the summertime? Yeah, I miss sitting around every day uh, begging, pleading for people to say something, anything. Oh, I just love them, man. Oh, hello. Bye. Oh! Tonight on the WB, it's Buffy, the Leprechaun Slayer. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to torment you. Is that so wrong? What are you doing? No, you're a vampire slayer, not a leprechaun slayer. Oh, God. Oh, what should I do? You can stop punching me in the head. Buffy, the Leprechaun Slayer. You've broken my head. We're not supposed to move the body. <laughs> 11.14, you know, somebody once described the St. Patrick's Day as just another excuse for the Irish to get drunk, which I find ridiculous because everybody knows the Irish don't need an excuse to get drunk. That's right. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. I think somebody peed in my uh, omelet this morning, you know. I'm starting like my eyes are watering and I feel like, uh, you know, my head is, uh, oh, all congested. Either that or it's my Florida allergies. I'm allergic as hell to this place. How could you forget Earl Anthony, says this one. Uh, oh, and not only that, that's right, another great bowler. Oh, excuse me for blowing my nose on here. You're not supposed to blow it on here. Here's the uh, thing. And they do fly to Fort Lauderdale, like during the season, I guess. They fly, uh, that's a Midwest Express Airlines. Somebody faxed me their itinerary, the map. They fly from Milwaukee, that's their hub to San Francisco, to Las Vegas. You hear that? So let's go to Milwaukee and uh, get drunk, and then we'll go to Las Vegas. Okay. She's hysterical. Los Angeles, they fly to Phoenix, Denver, Omaha. Oh, I do like Omaha. Isn't that strange that I like Omaha? Never been there. Really? Oh, they got all those great steakhouses, and boy, those corn-fed Midwestern uh, people. Girls? Both. Some. Well, some you can't tell. No, seriously, they got beautiful. Have you ever seen the people in Nebraska? I think if we wanted to take a definitive place for the most beautiful people in America, and you know, talk about the beaches and the, you know South Beach and Fort Lauderdale and L.A., Hawaii, I think Nebraska, Omaha, anyway. Like and you, and, what? Like and, and you wouldn't think so, would you? Why not? No Bible Belt. Well, all the people so. Oh man, those corn-fed people. Corn-fed. Corn fed and corn hold. Good, good skin. Beautiful skin. Not as good, not as smooth as the Chinese people, though. See, I don't know why you're so much against the having a whole bunch of I'm Chinese not, I think people. You've got there. a very uh, tunnel visioned view of the Chinese because of what we have I, here. I hate to break the news to you, sir. I mean, for, I, I, if, I, if I didn't have this headache, which I have a horrible headache, but if I didn't have this headache, I'd laugh so hard that I would like uh, probably wet my pants. See, the, the Chinese people we have here. He says. Now, keep in mind that I've been in, do they have like a lot of Chinese people all over Europe, Uh like in Rome Uh and in like Amsterdam? Uh Do you have any idea how many Chinese people there are in every European city? No. In one block, in any city in Europe, you'll find more Chinese people in five minutes than you'll find. You could scour all of South Florida, including all the uh, restaurants, and you wouldn't find as many Chinese people. 
Okay. How about, and how about in Toronto where they have not one but three different Chinatowns in Toronto, eh? Okay. Yeah. We need a Chinatown. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They're beautiful people. And they I don't have, have a uh, problem with them. I'm just saying they, they have a problem with them out west. They're having problems. When you, when you get your brain out of out west already, okay. for Christ's sakes, between Montana and the west coast, you got bring your brain a little bit closer back to here, please. I know it's All not right. very desirable, but try to do it. We're talking about us, sadly. Anyway, they fly all over the place. Kansas City. From Milwaukee, that's their hub. And they fly uh, from uh, Kansas City to, like, Atlanta. Anybody want to go to Atlanta? No. Not me. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. That's one of the uh, you can fly there from Milwaukee. So go to drive up to Raleigh and then uh, fly to Milwaukee and then back. Just do a round trip just to see how the airline is. No, now you're smiling if you have to play your cards right. Tell me, give him some free publicity. You get your freebie on it. Okay. Worked it like summer. Worked like hell on Martin Air, didn't it? No. No. It worked like hell on National Airlines to Vegas, didn't it? No. No. Damn it. Well, they need the money, National. You know, we got to keep them afloat. I hear Hank just flew out there to Vegas on National. They're still in business. You think Hank got a freebie? Here's line two in somewhere. Hello. Hey, Neil. Uh, I just, uh, I'm kind of a closet racist, uh, but I'll say that uh, for number two, white trash uh, certainly will mess up a town. Fast well, I know down. something. You might have your thumb on it because so far, African Americans are a uh, distant number. I mean, way ahead of the pack, number one. But number two are rednecks. Yeah, I, I just. Trailer I, trash. I just don't have the balls to discuss it. Okay. You know, black people, it's weird. It's just. Uh, well, what do you mean you don't have the balls to discuss it? Well, I don't know because I know I'm uh, somewhat racist. I'm not. You know, not well, but you much. understand this is the black man's plan. This is how he gets even for those uh, slavery and all that other stuff. This is uh, by making a lot of problems for us, and they're yeah. doing a great job of it. Well, I, I making mean, I mean every human man. being, I give the benefit of a doubt. Every human being, yeah. I mean. No, we're not but, talking about individuals. I mean, there are obviously some nice black people. I haven't met too many, but there are some individuals who are very nice. But we're talking as a group, you know, as a class. We're generalizing. I've met a lot of nice black people, but I'll tell you, this a neighborhood yeah. that uh, I would never live in. That's all there is to it. You wouldn't live in Overtown? I've been through there uh, oh, very Opal, quickly. Opalaka. <laughs> Lovely. Liberty I'm just going to the arena. Li the Liberty, out of Liberty City. Liberty City. Downtown, up, downtown Miami, right there by the arena in the Camillo's house. Come up here to West Palm. Which I'll is some you. good free meals. Yeah. Down, downtown West Palm Beach. There you go. That's where I am. It's, um, it's a scary situation. Okay, I'll see you on the other side of the bridge. <laughs> I'm moving up to Malabar next week. Okay, say hi to Esty Louder. <laughs> Whoever that is. Okay. Whoever that is. Here's a guy who lives in West Palm Beach. You don't know us. That's because they won't let him on the other side of that bridge over to Palm Beach. They don't allow his kind over there. Whoever that is. Makeup. I don't know. Is S.T. Lauder still alive? I would think so. Because she had like... Oh, the, uh, the company. I don't know about her. Huh? Wow, they had a huge mansion on Palm Beach. I mean, gigantic. Not like the Kennedy compound. So let's hang out of this thing here, Midwest Express Airlines. Maybe we can scam a free uh, trip on that, although I don't think they need our help after getting that deal on MSNBC last night, nationwide, worldwide. Great publicity. See, it goes to, uh, it goes to show you. You do a good job, and people are going to say nice things about you. If you do a crappy job, like American and Delta and uh, America Worth, people are going to say, <laughs> to them. That's what, Oh, I like that. You hear that? <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, doing the Atkins. Got no problem, you know, eating all the protein and stuff. It's just the uh, sweets I miss. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's why I can't. That late at night? That's it's why I can't. I don't. I don't combat it. That's why I'm fat as a pig. That's why my head is spinning from all those chocolate shakes from the <laughs> steak and shake. I'm serious. I'm gonna die from steak and shake. So what do you do? What what suggestions you have? The suggestion. What do you mean? What do I do? I I'm fat. Uh. That's what I do. All right. Thanks. I, I tear my guts out, wishing that I could be slim and beautiful. Thank you. And have you a have, Neil, do you have more chins than a Chinese phone book? Yes. No, I don't. As a matter of fact, I don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, only one. Thank you. Solamente uno. Soltanto uno. Isn't that interesting? The same thing. There's a lot of similarities between Espanol and Italiano, but uh, Italian's same a much more language. I understand. I know that, okay? The same they root. Don't. The same root. Like a baby root. That's what I got, a baby root. Yeah, it's like a candy bar. Root. Does anybody want to... Uh... So anyway... Ever toot? Yeah. Five six seven oh five oh five sixty pounds. I'm just incoherent. That omelet just send me. Uh, my head is swimming. Do you ever have that? Literally, like when your head is like uh, like dizzy, you know, like swimming. Yes. I'm not talking about like the the sugar swimming from like the rugalah. It's safe to assume that you don't want pizza lot to visit us today. Oh God, no! Is that man crazy or what? 
Wants to bring me more of that rubbery pasta like that last time? Is he out of his mind? I mean, I went ahead and made the call. I just figured it was a safe uh, safe one to make. You made the call for what? No, he, he called. And I told him, no, thank you. I don't think you're in the mood based on that. No, offer. thanks. No, thank you, Jeff. We love you. You're great. Have a nice shower in the back. Give a, give a big kiss to my friend Tanner. Give a little tongue down his throat for me. And, uh, you know, say I wish it were me. But that's it. No way. No food. i got to stop. I sympathize with that last guy because, God, you know, the American people, we are so goddamn fat. And I know that nobody wants to talk about this because it's embarrassing. Because, you know, it's just like the thing with the neighborhoods. I'm the only person in the goddamn country that's willing to come on the goddamn radio every day and talk about the stuff that most people are too pussified to talk about. Like that guy that called about a half hour ago and said he's been listening for a week and he can't believe how great this show is and all the stuff that I say that nobody has the balls to say, much less on the radio. And that's right. That's effing right, man. Fat. We're, we're disgusting. We're just huge cows with these big puppets. And I'm telling you, today is really bad. I went to Steak and Shake yesterday, and I had a pretty good day. What did I eat here? Oh, I had uh, from uh, Ira. I had Atlantic City Subs. Huh? Yeah, I had the uh, cold cut stuff, and I, you know, and there wasn't really all that much in there except a lot of greens, which is good. That's why I like it. And uh, no, uh, none of the um, croutons, which I can't eat. That sends your blood sugar skyrocketing. So that was okay. And then I went home and I had one of those protein bars. <laughs> huh? Not the Atkins ones, but these um, Carbolite. Carbolite. Carb not, Solutions. Carb sorry. Solutions. I'm sorry. Carb Solutions. Thanks so again, guys, from that. Rexall. And uh, and then last evening, about 7 o'clock, I got in the car and went over to Steak and Shake. i got to stop going there. I got a double cheeseburger with onions and bacon and a large chocolate shake. And I did something I never, ever do. Ever. I ate the cheeseburger with the bun. And I'm going to tell you something. It was delicious. It was. And, see, that's. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder where my head is swimming this morning. Now, my blood sugar this morning was 137, which isn't astronomical. But, I mean, you know, it should be a bit lower than that. It usually is. And then in the morning, you know, it goes up quite a bit. And then I came in here and ate that goddamn omelet. And so now my head is swimming. And I'm, just, I'm struggling in a sea of fat. And the only way that I'm lately treading water is by taking diuretics. You know what, taking diuretics is bad for diabetics because, first of all, for anybody, because taking uh, prescription diuretics uh, increases the uric acid levels, which uh, gives you gout and, you know, your feet. It's, it's bad for you. But I have to do it. It's like taking a sponge and wringing the water out, you know, and you keep wringing it out, and pretty soon the sponge is like dreck. You know, you got like a handful of uh, pieces of what used to be a sponge. And that's what it's like doing to your body, taking those diuretics. That's what it does to your kidneys. See, now here I go again. Well, this crap. But that guy got me motivated because he's frustrated. And I, re I relate to you, sir. If it makes you feel any better, I'm another fat slob that can't stop the goddamn sweets. I can't stop the sweets. I can't stop the goddamn sweets. I can stop the pasta. I can stop the bread. I can stop the rice. Although I tell you, that cheeseburger with a bun last night. So good. Almost made up for the fact that Josh was not in the drive-thru and all the Schwarzes were in there. Well, what is that all about? Seriously. Why, why, do we have to ship? I mean, I know we bus people to schools, but do we? Those people don't live out there. I hope. I mean, uh, I don't think. Huh? I shouldn't have said I hope, should I? I hope. No, no. I mean, it's not that I don't want. We have black people living out there by me because most black people don't want to live in uh, Liberty City or they don't want to live there. If they can afford to get out, they get out. They don't want to live in a slum. Of course not. They don't want to live in the hood. They want to live like in respectable places where like upstanding white people live, you know. And I can't blame them. But why can't we just have like some fast food place that's got like white people in it? I don't get that. There was white people in there last week and now all of a sudden there's black people at the uh, drive through and I bet you in a week there won't be any white people working there. You know what I'm saying? See how that starts? Like you plant one little seed and all of a sudden you got a whole goddamn field of it growing in your backyard. All you did was one, one plant. And all of a sudden, you got a whole yard full of that crap, and the helicopters are flying over, and you got real tourists, baby. Yeah, that's right. When the choppers start flying over, you got problems, man. They're after your ass. And because this is the U.S. of A., they're going to drag your fat ass away, and it will be a fat ass because it's America. Everybody's got a fat ass, and they'll drag it away and throw your ass in jail for 20 years because they don't like the goddamn wicked weed. They don't like the drug people, the goddamn pot people, because this country's like a bunch of overgrown chillins. And, I, and I, I do understand. I salute the black people for getting even. That's what they're doing. I don't know why you're smiling. This is what they are doing. That's why they cause so many problems. I mean, you can, you know, run around with Jesse Jackson and Farrakhan and Al Sharpton and all those assholes. Nobody pays any attention to them. 
But when you go around and start screwing up people's neighborhoods and turn them into a gigantic slum and force them to keep selling their property and moving to big laws, then that's getting even, I would say. So nice going, all you sports is you. You're doing it, baby. Now, don't forget this Sunday they'll be coming to pick you up. Maybe that's where all those kids were. Remember I said they were scattering by the school out here yesterday? Maybe they're getting ready to hop on that BTA thing. Yeah. Friday, you bastard. Last week, I did the craziest thing. I flew to Oakland to learn Ebonics. And then I hit the street to go check out my dad. And what happened was quite ironic. There was a black guy standing on the corner. I said to him, what's up, and your blood, what's going down? And he looked at me as if I was some kind of freak. And you won't believe what he called me. Chick-a-boom, chick-a-boom. Now how do you like a chick-a-boom, chick-a-boom? Best you don't like a chick-a-boom, chick-a-boom. The honky don't like a chick-a-boom, chick-a-boom, boom, boom. He said he bought a tape for you. And he pulled out his gun. I said, hey, man, I'm just learning Ebonics 101. Then he aimed at me and said, here's lesson 102. As I lay there, I thought I was dying. Someone called the paramedic. I bring too. Then another dude said, man, you pathetic honky fool. Do the bonnets again and we'll be dissing you. Chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo. Now how do you like a chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo? Yes, you don't like a chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo. The honky don't like a chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo, boo, boo. Chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo. Now how do you like a chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo? Yes, you don't like a chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo. The honky don't like the chick-a-boo, chick-a-boo, boo, boo. Number 32 at 560 WQAM. So anyway, Jeff Cohen, I think, is going to come over anyway and do a demonstration of eating ass here on the show instead of, like, having lunch. We'll just dispense with lunch. What? Who's the subject? Matty Bell. So anyway, man found uh, – oh, we well, better get this lady on here. She'll hang up. Uh, lady Mobile in the Keys, hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. How are you? Great. Well, I'm, da- I'm heading down to the Keys, and I just wanted to place my vote for white trash. Yeah. And tell you that I love you. Okay, thanks. And have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Mall customer found guilty of exposing himself. All right. This is a great story. A Rossville man. I don't I don't know where Rossville is. Let's see. Uh, well, I guess it don't make any difference. Who said he wasn't aware that his penis was hanging out of his shorts during visits to three stores at the Tippecanoe Mall last October has been convicted on three counts of public indecency. Christopher M. Filippo, 28, was convicted at the end of a one-day jury trial in Tippecanoe Superior Court on Tuesday. According to testimony, a clerk at Hotline Shoes notified mall security the morning of October 16th when Filippo left the store. She told a security officer that Filippo had exposed his penis to the leg of his shorts while trying on shoes. Mall security began monitoring Filippo via surveillance cameras. After leaving Hotline, Filippo went to the shoe department at Cole's department store. Video taken there showed Filippo fidgeting, rearranging his shorts, and looking around. After leaving Kohl's, he went to Sears, spent some time trying on suits, and then went to the shoe department where he was caught on surveillance video again, exposing himself through the leg of his shorts. He never bought any shoes. Security officers confronted him as he was leaving the mall, and he was arrested by Lafayette police. Filippo was married in a youth leader at, <laughs> and, and a youth leader at his church, was represented during the trial by attorney Stephen Meyer. Filippo testified that if he exposed himself, it was inadvertent. His genitals must have slipped out of the lining of his shorts. He said he was surprised when he watched the videos and saw how frequently he was tugging at his shorts. He said it was an unconscious habit. Deputy Prosecutor Christine Smith argued that the repeated incidents could not have been accidental. Several friends and family members attended the trial. His minister testified to his strong character and large penis. The jury deliberated for an hour and 20 minutes before convicting Filippo of all three Class A misdemeanors. Judge Laura Zeman sentenced him to two years on probation, including 90 days in house arrest, and imposed $425 in fines and court costs. And hopefully we'll get him some new shoes. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Maybe it's just my allergies, you know? Think that could be it? Are acting up? Could be. Because, like, my eye is, like, watering. It's going around. And my nose is running, is it? I think I got bad allergies. 
My WQAM allergies are really big. Uh-huh. Awful. Especially when I saw Maddie Bell in the hall waving, ah, get out of here, Maddie, you little, uh, I don't even know what to call him, dickhead. And that would be a compliment. But there's our good close friend, Miguel, okay? He can come in and see us anytime. Get Maddie Bell out of here, okay? Step on him. Here's Sunrise. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you, sir? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. All right. Just sitting here putting my leg on because of all those chocolate shakes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do it every time. You bet. I got some old bowlers for you. Okay. Ray Bluth. Ray Bluth, yeah, with the big eyebrows. Bobby Knipple. No, I don't know that one. Dave Davis. Yeah. And I got one more thing about the neighborhoods. Having come from New York 20-some-odd years ago, there is nothing that can kill a neighborhood faster than a Hasidic Jew. No, it's on there. They're doing uh, pretty good. They got 22, uh, 20, uh, 18, whatever it is. They ruined every neighborhood, and when they move out, the blacks move in. Okay. And that's why, also, in your fast food places, as soon as the first black person moves in, the white people move out. In the fast food joint? Sure. Are you serious? Sure. Especially hmm. Miami subs. Okay, thanks for the good news. Bye. See you. I'll see you at Subway. Orthodox Jew, see, and you didn't think that belonged on the list. This guy, he uh, has experience. He knows what it would be all about. What doesn't belong on the list? Orthodox Jews. They create havoc and dissension and uh, foment and uh, throw rocks and uh, just create the uh, psychosis. Not to mention the aroma, of course, of the uh, hood. Well, the ones out by me in Hollywood are just... Fine. Wonderful. Yeah, see, well, you're just sucking up because your accountant is one of them. You know, that's why you're sucking up. Okay. I, yeah, I hope he gives you some of that diet uh, halava. And then... I hope he does. Then you, yeah, I hope he does. And then you'll think Peter Leonard's probably not so bad. Yeah. Man. All of your neighbors will be Schmitz. 265... Telling that. Yeah, without the M. 265 votes on our survey so far, which is pretty heavy duty. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? African American seems to be leading the list with 101. That's pretty shocking, isn't it? No. No. Rednecks 47, like trailer park trash. I don't want to put trailer trash on there. That would have been bad, you know. That would have been like putting schwarzers on there instead of African Americans is like respectable, you know. At least it sounds respectable. Rednecks 47, Puerto Ricans 25, Haitians 22, Orthodox Jews oh, 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 19. Cubans, 19. Jamaicans, 18. Jamaicans, 18. Yeah, man. They got the good stuff, man. Mexican, 7. See, we finally got a few Mexican people in there, just to make you happy, since you continue to, to delude. And nobody put Chinese on there. Of course, I didn't put it on the other. Chinese people are wonderful. I don't, I don't know what kind of uh, delusory. Uh, you must be doing the bad drugs this week. George couldn't find his regular supplier this week, and he uh, wants to apologize. Why do you say those things about the Chinese? Because of all these in, 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 addition, the in, a, on the West in addition to which, the West Coast is filled not just with Koreans and right, Viet, Vietnamese, Vietnamese, right? Yeah, and all of these things. Okinawans and whatever. Wow, jeez. Mexican seven, gays five, and Nicaraguans only two. See, and we'd have a very large Nicaraguan population down Huge, here. Yeah, humong- humongous. In fact, we got, uh, according to this thing we saved here, 105,000, and that was some time ago. And at the rate they multiply, it's probably like a half a million already. And this article is only like two weeks old. So they must be nice neighbors. So if any Nicaraguans come knocking on yours, say, hey, come on right in, okay? You know, they might be the ones responsible for bringing back the uh, 79th Street neighborhood. I told you I was driving by there the other day. Bringing back the 79th Street neighborhood? <laughs> Are you out of your freaking mind? No. By there just a couple weeks ago. Remember the drive to and from work, especially 82nd Street with all those old Florida houses were where that was all dilapidated for like five blocks in a row, all new paint, all new lawns. You're talking about east of Biscayne Boulevard. East of Biscayne on the mainland. Right. But east of Biscayne. all repainted. Because when you say 79th Street, it conjures conjures up very uh, negatory images. But remember how scummy it was? Very, like like around the INS building and like the, uh, right, what is it now, the old uh, Pussycat Theater? Right, East of And the, the Playboy Club? All those houses have been And repainted. Juniors? Yes. And the 8,000 Club? Just north of the Honey's Hamlet? Right. Uh-huh. And get the Honey Sunny? All repainted. Great. All replanted. We, we love our Nicaraguans. Brown-skinned people. Must be them. Hmm. Maybe that guy that came in yesterday from Atlantic City says maybe he was Nicaraguan. Huh? I didn't ask him. 
Well, we liked him because... I think he, his name is Tony. We liked him a lot because he wasn't uh, Scott. This is 560 QAM. Hank is God. I love Hank. What? I'm having a gay affair with Hank. Yo, homies! You heard of snack whales? Well, now there's crack whales. The new cookie with crack. Yeah, that's right. That crazy cookie-loving bitch wants the tasty flavor of crack. New crack whales. And they're double height. And they're sure to make you higher than a mofo kite. <laughs> and they'll make you lose a lot of weight. And people won't know you eating crack whales when they see that skinny-ass body of yours. Come on, Mr. Crack Whale Cookie Man. Give me my mother cookies. I paid for them, you son of a bitch. New crack whales. Now sold on street corners everywhere. It's 11.43 at 5.60 WQM. Here's a uh, almost incoherent fax. Oh, I see. This is one of our chronic faxes. Uh-huh. It says, African-American is too broad of a, tour, a term. I say blacks are the problem. There are too many different kinds of African-Americans, uh, French, British, uh, whatever. It says, peace, love, and Mary Jane. Leave the poor potheads alone. Homeless people, blacks, and crackers is what this uh, person, this, look at the writing. Homeless people, blacks, and crackers. Here's one that says, with respect to your headache, you might want to check the air conditioning filter at the station. Also, I have a question. Is Hank Goldberg handsome? <laughs> well, that's why I played that bit I just played there. That, thing. that was funny. Signed, Chris. I would say Hank's probably almost as handsome as I am, but not quite. Huh? Almost. Almost as handsome as the lovely Miguel, but not quite. A little bit younger. Probably a little hairier. Not too much. See, that's one thing about the Chinese people. Boy, they're smooth and hairless, you know? And the women, too. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless, wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, uh, George is right about that Seventy Ninth Street area. Yeah, they, they're opening some nice restaurants around there and stuff like that. It's really good. It's really good what they're doing. But I called. I have two comments. One, little, little Nicaragua, huh? Yeah. Maybe we could bring back Anna Squeak so she could say Nicaragua, Nicaragua. I can't just uh, every time I think of those days, I just get goosebumps. But I wanted to say something about Orthodox Jews. Yes. I think their neighborhoods are nice. Oh. 31st Street and all that. I live around that area. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's nice. I mean, they except keep it clean. Except and, in uh, July and August when they all start coming outside and that aroma starts wafting through the air. That's, that's a little heavy to take, you know? <laughs> and one more thing was... Uh, and then when they start rolling their tzitzes, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, the neighborhood at least is nice and property values don't go down, which is... uh. A huge problem we yeah, have see, that, that's time. a good point. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? Some people aren't to understand. Some of the people are just looking uh, for an opportunity to express their uh, disgust with some people and their bigotry. Well, look at the LA, LA riots, you know? Yeah. But uh, as far as... Uh, and look, at the, look, at those, look at those riots in Seattle with all those nice white people. Yeah, well, that's different. That's yeah. another part of the country. Obesity, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you go to any, any other country in the world, you've never seen such obese people like you do in the U.S. It's no unbelievable. Question, no question about it. And you go to like those these Chinese buffets and stuff like that, and that's the example of American society. All these fat pigs over there stuffing right. their faces and going for seconds and thirds. That's right. And I, I I feel like uh, Ichabod Crane when I go to the Emerald Coast to the Chinese buffet, you know, because I'm one of the skinniest people in there, <laughs> and I'm a tub of crap. <laughs> Have a great day. I, okay. I am. I'm a fat tub of crap. I love those people who say, "Oh, you're not so fat." Yeah, people that saw me 20 years ago when I was a gigantic tub of crap, they say, oh, well, you're not so bad. Yeah, well, compared to then, you know, big deal. You're half the man. That would be like saying to Fat Boy, oh, you're not so fat. Well, he's still a big, gigantic tub of crap. He's just not as big of a tub of crap as he used to be. He's still limping around with his hip uh, falling on his ankle, you know, because he's like a, a gigantic tub of crap. He'll lose enough weight so it doesn't hurt so bad anymore, and then he'll put it all back on. You think? Yes. And then he'll die. Well, you'll die too, mister. Not as quick. I guarantee you'll be Not dying soon. One of these days, when you least expect it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. Oi! On the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. You are smoking today. I am. I'm smoking the good stuff. Maybe that's why my eyes are uh, watering. Absolutely. Listen, I have the. For- I'm fortunate enough to live out near where you are, and I also do go to Steak and Shake. And you're speaking about the dark colored. Uh, employees there, but I wanted to ask you, you go to the, the Publix out there at Sawgrass, too. You saw that with the bag boys. No. The guys that are checking out? I don't see any black uh, bag boys at Publix. That are speaking a different language? you got to be kidding me. That are speaking a different language? Absolutely. I always wanted to call you about that, but you're bringing... They bust them into that area at sunrise. They bust... They're black bag boys in my Publix? 
Absolutely. I never saw one. Never saw one. Yeah, but but like I said, I wanted to always ask you what because since you shop there, what language? But you know, they're from another country. But the point is, they bust them into that area. Uh, you didn't well, have a bus stop they, in front they, of they, and they, must, they must shove, shove them all in the back when they see me coming in there because I never saw them. I'm, I'm in there like ten times a week in that Publix. I practically live there. Absolutely. The bag and some of the guys that are stocking. Yeah. But it's the same people who are working now. When you pull up to the drive through it's steak and shake, and you look I, I don't. I don't even see black people shopping in my Publix. You mean to tell me that there are black people in my Publix now? Well, employees, employees, employees. Yeah. They're not shopping. Not yet. But, but it's the same crew now. They bu- that are at Steak and Shake. If you look at the bus stop. Yeah, but wait a minute. Sunrise. Let me say it again. Two weeks ago, which Steak and Shake, as you know, hasn't been open that long. Right, and Two right, weeks right. ago, I drove through there, and there was all like white people in that Steak and Shake, including the drive-thru. Right. Now, every time you go through the drive-thru, the people working in the main part of the restaurant are all white yep. because you can see them through the window when you drive up to the. <laughs> and the, and the yep. and in the back there at the drive-thru, it's all dark, folks. What is that all about? You walk in the front. Why don't they mix the it up a little bit? White. Right. You walk in the front, the manager's white. He, maybe the drive through guy, but the people working in the back, they're, they're all black. Well, why is that? They're, they're good workers. They're, it's, a, it's been worked out with Sunrise. I told you they bust them in. They don't live in that area. Oh, well, thank, they, thank God for that. Well, the thing is, you know, they're, they're usually, you got to admit, they're, like, they're, they're clean cut. They're working, yeah, working, they're, they're working. Very nice. right very nice. right? And they got the order right. They were very polite, yeah. yeah absolutely. That's they're why I'm saying boys. these aren't just, as I said, they're brought in because... That area is so popular, and they need, you know, they're, they're, I'm just saying, I think that it's a different type of uh, black folk working out there at Sawgrass. Yeah, well, thank God. And also, one more thing, the Orthodox Jews, take a look at, uh, what is that, Sterling Road between, uh, out near your mother's house in 95. Oh, yeah. The difference is, they're not sitting out with a 40 in their hand, they're walking, sweating their ass off with their tits in their face. <laughs> yeah, with well, their tits hanging out. Absolutely. Okay. Be good, Neil. Zygazun. Zygazun. Okay. Yeah, they must save that for the backyard. Yeah. Sitting on a crate with a mm-hmm. 40, drinking out of a bag. Well, you know, when you get to a certain age, you got to be careful which bag you're drinking out of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Five, six, seven. <laughs> well, you know, one straw fits all. That's what they say in the condo. One straw fits all. <laughs> it's in the bag, baby. It's floating in there. I get uh, <laughs> I guess I lost my appetite for my chocolate malt now. That was a good way to do it. It looked like a chocolate malt. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon line. Well, the good news is we're back to doing promos, so we just yeah. I I don't know what the deal is. I feel like I'm on drugs today. It must have been that omelet. I think somebody tinkled in my omelet. Uh, but I hope it was Miguel. Is he still in there? Or he leaves. Yeah, he's there. He's there. I hope it was you, sweetheart. He takes shelter. You can pee in my omelet anytime. You know, it was amazing. When I took him, when he came and brought that uh, thing to the house, he and uh, Joe, that big dude. And again, thank you very much for that bench, for the guys that made that. And took it in my bedroom. He says, God, I can't believe how shiny that thing is. And I said, yeah, but what about the bench? Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Well, how I am. And then I commended him on his good eyesight. Yes, sir. Good job, George. Listen, uh, I have a friend uh, that's a Hollywood detective, uh, and he works the beach area. Yeah. And um, he, I asked him dick? what's the biggest complaint down there on the beach, and he says it's uh, like men exposing themselves. Mm. Uh, so, you know, if there's any place for, you know, uh, to pick up some action, I guess that's the place to go. Uh-huh. Either, either that or the shoe store. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. Not a bad idea either. Okay, and if, you, wear on a short and, and if you can find a shoe store near the beach, then you really got it licked. All right, Neil. Yeah. Okay, have a great well, day. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think we're all incoherent. Uh-huh. I think now that uh, they're going to give the Nobel Peace Prize to Fidel. I mean, what the hell is that all about? God. Five, six, uh, and, and you know something? I don't even get aggravated anymore. What's the point? The whole world is crazy anyway. So what's that? And all you old toothless Cubans, I know some of you are listening. I know you could easily get all bent out of shape about it again. Just forget about it, okay? Just consider it as part of uh, the crazy world. That's all, yeah. I mean, if he was over there sucking the Pope's ass, uh, wouldn't that? In fact, Dwight Lauderdale's got a great expose coming up this weekend on Channel 10. Now, it ha- I, I don't want to, you know, tip you off on what it is, but it has something to do with the Pope and Fidel and eating ass. So that, that's all I'm going to tell you. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Good show as usual. Of course. Hey, it's funny you guys talking about these topics about the uh, uh, the dark folks and the uh, brown folks and the yellow folks. 
the dark folks, the brown folks, the yellow folks, and the uh-huh. pink folks, and the red folks, and, and the white everybody folks. Everybody hates the Jews. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, the other day I was, at, I was at home and uh, 99 Jams called. They were doing some uh, survey. Yeah. And they asked you all kinds of questions, you know, um, uh, race, type of music you listen to, mm-hmm. uh, household income, uh, median rate, median age in mm-hmm. uh, household, things like that. And the last question was, how come you? Uh, how come there aren't that many black people on TV? Really? That was the last question they asked me. Other than the Jeffersons and the uh, Good Times? No. So I said that you could maybe have a TV. channel where you played cops in America's Most Wanted 24 hours a day. Yeah. There you go. That's good. And they hung up on me. And or just that was, Sanford and Son reruns would be good. That was the last of it. Okay, amigo. All right, buddy. Keep it straight. Have a good one. You too. Five six seven. Oh, I was going to ask him a question. Is, uh, other than George, is there any? Uh, does he know any uh, Hispanic people who are exclusively heterosexual? That'd be a good poll for us to take one day next week. Don't let me forget. Other than George and Miguel, and I'm not too sure about Miguel. Five six seven. Yeah. Oh, hey, give me a look. Give me a look. There are some men in my family I can vouch for. I see. I've heard the stories about when he goes out in the van there and kind of like flirts with those uh, fags we got in our audience. I've heard those stories. That's just so they give him money. Yeah. I think they have a word for that. Prostituta. Five six seven oh five sixty. Prostituto. Prostituta. Five six seven oh five sixty. Rectum. Now you're getting close. Pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Just let's start. keep talking in English here, okay? We don't want to alienate all our good uh, trailer park tribe. I mean, our, our white people. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? African Americans, hundred seventeen. Rednecks, fifty three. Jesus Christ, that's the whole Jerry Springer audience right oh, there. Dude. Orthodox Jews, 28. Oh, wait a minute. It's, uh, it's uh, reloading here. Puerto Ricans, 26. Haitians, 25. Cubans, 25. Jamaicans, 20. Yeah, man. Mexicans still stuck there on seven. Gays, five. Nicaraguans, two. See that? Everybody likes those fags in the Nicaraguans. You ought to kiss the ground when a fags move in your neighborhood, I'll tell you that. Just don't peek in the window. Seriously, fags. Oh, look at Wilton Manners, huh? And even they just elected that fag in Oakland Park there. He's going to straighten things out. See, the rest of the public's starting to catch on. When you have more dispensable income, and until you meet in a church, when you have more dispensable income, then you can, like, keep your property up real nice. Huh? Isn't that a big part of it? Must be. Don't have a whole bunch of pain in the ass kids that you have to spend to clothe and feed and send off to private school and college and stuff like that. Don't have all those expenses. And you can have like a whole bunch of Corvettes and things, you know, things like seriously, right? Right. Pay for other people's cars. Sure. I like that. So maybe like this summer when that all stops. I mean, well, I know. See, I think what I'm going to do, I, I got to, I want to be fair about this. But like anybody else that I know, I don't want to mention any names since there are several on the list who have just kind of like latched on to my uh, paycheck. It just uh, when we reach it, when my minus, when I get to a certain minus point, and that uh, you know. At that point, I suspend all other payments. You know, it's just, it's just necessary. You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, if the market should come back, which you better hope like hell it does, then then we'll you know reconsider it. We'll renegotiate. Four okay. minutes till noon at five sixty. So you better suck up to the bro camper. It's all I can tell. You. This is five sixty QAM. Alonzo, you're so big. Gee, Bob, I don't know how to say this, but you've got bad breath. I know, Frank. I've tried everything. Brushing, flossing, even industrial strength mouthwash. Here, try some all-new Glycerine. (laughs) Wow, my breath sounds better already. It sure does. That's because Glycerine is the musical mouthwash substitute that goes to work immediately by making a pleasant cleansing sound. Just open the top. Swish some glycerine around in that festering germ-breeding ground you call a mouth. And listen to glycerine's patented audio non-action go to work. Mm, sure sounds fresh. Too bad it doesn't smell that way. <laughs> uh, Bob? 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 Would you mind laughing in the other direction? Sorry. Glycerine. Put the artificial sound of freshness to work on your bad breath today. Another fine product from the Glissando Corporation. And what a great segue into this fax here from a listener in Tampa who says, "Is one fag to another. I thought you might enjoy this. What's the difference between love, true love, and just plain showing off? Spitting, swallowing, or gargling? Not bad. 
speaking of that, I was thinking to myself, you know, this desperation to lose weight, you just have to stop eating. You know, when I was on that liquid protein you know, diet many years ago, 26 years ago when I was working at WJ in West Palm Beach, lost 100 pounds in a year, some of it on Atkins, some on Stillman, but mostly on liquid protein. Oh, it's a good thing he walked out because I was thinking he was going to help me start the diet. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the 18th. What's wrong with that? A delicious shake. Vitamin C is good for you, baby. When in doubt, shake it out. Oh, and speaking of that, here's another fact. It says there's no way that gays should be on that list. Now, I put them on there just to prove a point. But it says the greatest way to get a neighborhood improved is to try and sell a few homes to some gay people. All of a sudden, the homes are beautifully painted. Flowers and trees are planted, and the property looks great. The great things about gays is they have the best sense of decorating, love to keep the gardens of the homes full of flowers, and keep the neighborhood looking elegant like those beautiful pansies. They also don't mind moving into poor black areas since the blacks eventually sell their homes to other gay couples. Oh, is that is that true? Yes. Huh. So in other words, the Schwarzers, when the fags start moving in, the Schwarzers start moving out? Yeah, well, they get a good price for their home. Oh, I see. Who else is going to give them a good price for their home? That's true. They have taken some rundown areas of Fort Lauderdale and also off of Biscayne Boulevard in downtown Miami started to improve the general appearance of the area. I'm not gay, but I could kiss these guys for the beauty they bring into some areas that are dead and look like a garbage dump before. And yeah. do that. So give them a big kiss, but just watch where you stick it. Five six seven oh five six. As a matter of fact, if some of these depressed neighborhoods were smart, they would start advertising that they're gay friendly. We're a fag friendly neighborhood. Uh huh. We won't stone you, beat you, burn you out of your house. Right. You mean like right around the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church would be good. Uh huh. That could sure use some work. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon line. Here's Lake Worth. Hello. Yeah, I'm in Hialeah. Here's and, Hialeah. Uh, Actually, I live in Hialeah. Okay. I got, I got a new category for you. How about a Latin uh, rednecks? Yeah. Nicaraguans, Hondurans, the Cubans, all the farmers that have come over here and just totally ruined my neighborhood. Uh huh. So anyway, hey, I miss Piedmont Airline. Southwest sucks. And I travel in. Um, the South Southwest. The Southwest often. really suck. I never heard anybody say anything bad about Southwest before until this moment. Are you serious? Have you ever flown them? No. Oh, it's a cattle call. They don't go anywhere. Yeah, well, that's the other problem too. And when you want to get somewhere from like here to LA, you've got to make fourteen stops. stops. Yeah, fourteen stops. It's horrible. But I travel um, in the South a lot, and I go to Mississippi, and obviously I go to Biloxi for the casinos. I was there yesterday, uh, actually Wednesday. I get onto the parking lot. I say, two huge busloads of uh, elderly people loading up the bus. Oh, where do you think they're from? Miami Beach, Miami. Saint Petersburg. Yeah, I was saying, well, oh no, yeah, that's even worse. I felt like asking, well, why don't you people vote for it next time? The great grandparents of the people from uh, Sunrise are in St. Pete. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh huh. Well, they like the bus ride. That must be it. Yeah, but don't put it in our state, right? Okay, amigo. Bye bye. See you in the M- Mississippi. Not, I'm not. Am I going to Mississippi? No. No. Five six seven zero oh, five sixty. Oh, and I forgot to read this promo anymore, and it's all over now. Thank goodness. Okay. Sorry, Clarence. Well, I read it a couple of times. That's it. The price was right. Leave me alone. Here's a mobile in Jupiter. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, the way you're running this uh, poll, you gotta you got to do something different about it. Always vote for the Schwarzers and Cubans and everybody. you got to put all that in the category with the Jews, because what the Jews do is they live in the neighborhoods till about 75, 80% ruined, then they turn them over to these other people so they look like the bad guys. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, you give, you give the other people a break. It's the Jews that ruined the places. The other people want to just look bad. Yeah, okay, thanks. Sure. By the way, say hi to your friend from uh, Finland. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon. In my country, we have no Negro. Yeah, or Jews or anything else. I know. You're finished. Say hi to Aki Berg while you're at it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. See where this guy may have had a point by saying that Jews sell out to uh, Schwarzes, and that's true. That's true, because Jews tend to be very liberal, or at least they used to. And then they sell, you know, the first they let the first black family in, and now all of a sudden everybody else goes, oh, oh, and we're moving out. And then, of course, before you know it, everybody in the hood is black. That's why they call it the hood. And then you got some real problems, because then it's payback time. We're going to show you a thing or two. And then if you really get us pissed off, we'll burn down our neighborhood. Here's Dallas. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? All right. Thank God for the Internet. Oh, man. Couldn't live without it now. Good. But I work for an airline that uh, has a couple of A's on it. And, that sucks. What, I mean, if you can just briefly tell me, what have your experiences been on American Airlines? Not and, good. 
not as far good. as as far as anything. The the only good thing I'll say about American Airlines is if you happen to be taking a flight at the right time of day and you're in first class and they give you like a meal, that the food is pretty good, better than the other domestic carriers. Food is pretty damn good. But other than that, I can't say anything good about American, especially down here in Miami, because between the hand grenades and the drugs and the heroin and all the other stuff, it's a nightmare. And in addition to which, the part of the airport in Miami International that they fly out of, it's like the banana boat part of the airport. Yeah, that's one of the they, things. They call it the banana boat terminal. <laughs> that's one of the things, I'm, you know, since I've lived in Miami and I'm out here now, I, I'm kind of, um, I, I look at a lot of what the company does here, and the, the terminals that they're going to be building in Miami is actually going to be uh, very beautiful. I think it's going to change a lot of people's opinions on um, Miami. It's going to be about $20 billion over budget, uh -huh. but it will be nice. Well, you know, the mayor needs some, uh, although I'll tell you, not that they're looking like they're going to build a stadium down there. Uh -huh. Boy, oh boy, the construction people are just salivating. They're rubbing their hands and their glands together, just waiting to get uh, all the graph from that. Yeah, but um, you know, hey, you know, I would like to uh, try to get you a um, try to reaccommodate you on maybe one of your tri trips to uh, Toronto. Um, how often do you fly fly first or business class? How what? How often do you fly first or business? I always fly first or business. I wouldn't fly coach again. I mean, when you got uh, at least I used to have the big bucks. When you have a few bucks, why would you want to fly like a sardine? Exactly. My point. That, that's what I. That's what I do. If you like, um, I can go ahead and hold on the line. I can try to make you a uh, proposition on a trip for one of your next trips to uh, Toronto. Okay, great. Like. Hang on. Excellent. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, on line nine there. Take uh, that guy's info there. Maybe I can give me a little freebie. Oh, there he is. You know, run around again. Sure. Why the hell not? Most of you would like to have in a bank right now the money I've wasted on airlines the last ten years. Take care of that guy's info there on nine, please. I, I think it's because it's 100 degrees below zero in here. That might have something to do with it, my allergies acting up. It's so goddamn cold that George put his jacket on. This is like a crazy place in here. My damn uh, champion light uh, sugar-free refreshener in my glass is starting to turn into goddamn into a, a hockey rink. You know, and I should mention this in case there's anybody from the organization, since I know the Leafs will be in town because they lost to a girls' team in Tampa last night. Nice going, guys. Nice going, Mary Healy. You suck. But since they are playing here tomorrow night, and I will be at that game, that'll be the only one I'll be at the rest of the year. I should mention to me, you don't expect anybody talking about hockey down here, and don't don't start confusing those black rats you saw back in that year a hundred years ago been thrown out. There's nobody down here interested in that. You know, it, it's uh, and then they'll go to the Penguin game and they see a sellout. Oh, he's wrong. This is a great hockey town. Yeah, two sellouts in two years, not too good. No. You can't complain about the knowledge of the interest down here because it is non-existent. And I still think that the guy that we gave the tickets to the other day, I think he was reading those names off uh, a list of maybe the Internet or got a roster somewhere. I, I believe that. He wouldn't do Darcy Tucker from Mother uh, Schmucker. I'm, I'm telling you. Hey, attention, Broward County, South Florida's premier computer training facility, Fast Train, has expanded in the West Broward with the grand opening of their newest location in prestigious Pembroke Pines. Now, three convenient locations, and by the way, I should mention, Todd Reck, you're a major asshole, you know. Take, take a look at this. No name, no date, no nothing. And don't come in here using our scale anymore. We're going to start charging five bucks a pop. Todd Dreck, we can't stand you. You're not fooling anybody. Want a lollipop, little boy? See, oh, I hear it. It's true. No, you can hear it. <laughs> well, you threw me off when you start talking about uh, Miguel's ass. Def Comedy Jam Records brings the best of Def Comedy Jam to video. It's six hours of undecipherable comedy on three videotapes. You'll get classic comedy like. So this muff comes up to me and says, what the f*** is that muff? I show him the muff. Door busts all over the muff. And I tell the bitch to stop a muff. Yapping her, I take the muff. Holes and shove it up a muff. And you'll also get the classic, suck my dick. So this motherfucker show me the bill. I tell them, like, suck my dick. Jeff Comedy Jam, a must for any motherfucker video collection. Jeff Comedy Jam, where MF is an adjective. 12.15 at 5.60. Here's a fact that says Beasley stock is over 15. Start selling. Oh! you like that? How's that possible? Everything else is going in the tank. I'm not going to get back on that topic again, okay, because I, what, I, what I could say about them, you people on the gambling channel, you suck, you're a bunch of crazy people. 
And one day they're talking about, oh, the banks and the financials and the advertising, and it's all great. And then the next day, oh, it's going to be terrible, and business is down, and everybody's selling it. They, you, you haven't got a clue. You people on the gambling channel, there isn't one person on there that's got any freaking idea what they're talking about. Not one. So if you want to watch it for, like, entertainment and a dog and a pony show, just keep that in mind. But not for, like, any guidance on what to do with your money. Please. We'll give you a rumor psychic uh, investment hotline number before we start doing that. So I'm having my uh, Carb Solutions uh, bar here. My only two-carb bar. That's my lunch. Yeah, I think I'm going to go on these. Because I just got to stop eating. That's all there is to it. No more food, baby. No more. No more this year. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil Rogers. Speaking. I want to tell you something. Go right ahead. There is very, very few people that I would wait on the phone 25 minutes to talk to. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Uh-huh, tell I you why. I retired from the radio television industry on a major, major level. Uh-huh. And I can relate to what you do, and I take my hat off to you. Yes, sir, and you should. And I want to know... Especially on want, Friday after sundown, please. But I want to ask you a question. By yeah. the way, when I say I'm retired, I now have a second career. Uh, very unexpectedly, I fell into it. Uh, I organized legally an organization a little over three years ago. And I don't mention any names. It's not necessary. No, it's not necessary. Uh, this organization, we're very, very concerned as to what is being done to children and families in our community. Mm-hmm. And the main, one of the main culprits, there are a number of them, and they all work together, unfortunately. Why they do it, it's like God call them all together and say, this is what you're going to have to do together. But they do it. And we are determined that we're going to see if we can put a stop to it. We have put, a, put a stop to what? The, uh, the terrible things that are being done to children and families. There is no level playing field uh, down here. As a matter of fact, even throughout the state of Florida, there's no level playing field that is accorded to children and families. Uh-huh. It's as though that the children don't count because they don't vote. Yeah. It's a disgrace. So what are you going to do for them, sir? What are you saying? Well, my organization... Your we, organization, yes. What, what we do is we are going to combat this problem. We do it now. We have some very, very... By doing what, sir? By doing what? Please, Zugmir, tell me. What we do is we bring it to the attention of the public... Uh, we go into the courts. Uh, we are, we're active in the court system, the education right. system, in health, foster care, and adoption. Those are five major areas. Yes, sir. And we we address all those areas to help these children and families. We're a nonprofit volunteer organization. Right. Now, what why, I, why why I'm telling it to you. Because why are you telling me that? You must be reading my mind. That was going to be my next question. Well, you're ferreting it out of me because you're a smart man. Yes, I am. That's I why I waited 25 minutes to talk. That's why I'm talking to you. I want to know. I want to know. Would you be interested? I can't tell you on the air, and I won't tell you on the air. No. If I drop you a note uh-huh. as to, in more detail, as to what we do, because we need all the help that we can get from reliable people in our community. All the help doing what? What can I do for you, sir? Bring to the attention uh, uh, to the public as to what is going on, this insidious problem that exists. Now, I speak to the governor, who is not a political friend of mine, Uh but he's an old friend of mine. Yeah, he's an asshole. What? He's a a tight ass. (laughs) Tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, As well as uh, the secretary of of the Department of Children and Families, who Jim appointed. And don't forget the attorney general, who's even a bigger asshole. Well, I tell you, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I know all these people by virtue of the work that we believe in doing. Now, Mm -hmm. these people, obviously, as you and I are well aware, are all politicians. Uh And that's the bottom line. Let's hear some spinners. Come on, George. I don't know. I don't know what they will do, what they will do, but I say this. Games people play, sounds like to me. People are beginning to talk to us now. That, that our friend Jeff Bush Allergies Bush, killing me. Maybe a one time oh, governor. My head, my nose, my eyes. Are you going off the air? I beg your pardon, I'm going off the air. You're going off this the air. This call is what did it to me. I'm going off the air. Ah, uh, shame, you see. Okay. By the way, one, one suggestion I want to make to you. Real quick, because my phone is running one, Very quickly. Yeah. When your man answers the phone, I suggest as your best my man. that he tell the person waiting on the phone he has X amount of callers before him. No, your, no. Okay, well, now, what, does anybody have any idea what he just said? No. no. But he's very important. Oh, very good. That was excellent. Thank you for the good talk up, sir. And good luck to you, whatever you're, whatever you're talking about. He said something about the governor. He's an asshole. Yeah, we already knew that. Here's the fact that says nothing ruins a neighborhood in the city faster than one six-year-old orphan and his distant Miami relatives. <laughs> oh. 
How can you say that about Eliancito? What the hell's wrong with you, baby? And I sure hope. I'm going to pray right now. Hail Mary, Holy Mother of God, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed are all those fruits. I'm praying right now that he's getting that happy meal, and that doesn't have no foot and mouth or hoof and mouth or mad cow disease. Yeah, I got a fax this morning from a guy, from one of our lawyer friends, who's a regular chronic faxer and a good guy. Says he thinks that Jeff Rimmer's got a hoof and mouth and foot and mouth. I told you that the other day. Didn't believe me. Oh, I forgot to mention about my stuff here from Rocky Raisin. Kenneth Masmacho, Rocky Raisin or Rocky Raccoon? There's old Rocky with some very nice uh, Asian lady. Which one's him? On the, oh, uh, I see. In the middle. And uh, Rocky Raisin was a school teacher in this town for 32 uh, years. Used to be a guest on my show on WKT way back when. Great guy. Loved by the students. Was a creative teacher who got the kids interested in science and this and that. He was great. And now he's like all over the place. He's still a, a publicity hound, but he's a great guy. Love you, Rocky. Thanks for the good news. I'm glad you're doing well. Your friend who was just on the phone called well, back. My best friend. He yeah. got what happened? Did he get cut off? Yeah, he wasn't done. He was. He's done. He's done. Just like a, a crispy steak. Well done. Thanks a lot, Rocky, and best of luck to you, sir. You're done, sir. And quit boring us, okay, you old fart. The hell was he talking? And I love the way he starts the call by, he used to be very important. He was, okay, Greg, are we impressed? No. God. Used to be is the opposite. Yeah, right. Could smell the toe jam coming through the phone there. God. 5670560, oh, plenty of openings here. And then, he, then he's bitching about the fact he had to wait so long. He's not going anywhere. Mobile in Fort, mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil, I have never heard somebody talk so long and say absolutely nothing. Yeah, what the hell was he saying? I have no idea. He's got hey, something Southwest very important Air he's doing, but we don't know what it is. Yeah, Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is okay for a guy like me, a regular Joe, doesn't have big bucks to spend flying. They've got cheap flights and a million of them. Uh-huh. I is, understand you can fly from here to Tampa. It's only six stops. Uh, here to Tampa is a one-stopper, but like, I'm going to Boston, <laughs> and I think that's a three-stopper. Uh-huh. But but it's cheap. It's like 169 bucks round trip to go to, to um, you know Massachusetts or I've, I've flown them quite a few times. Mm -hmm. They have a pretty good credit card deal. Every time you spend a thousand bucks on their credit card, you get a flight credit, and every 16 flight credits you get a free flight. Well, what was, what was that other guy talking about? That it was uh, awful and it's a cattle call. Now, I guess it, he's upset because they don't have like reserved seats. That's what it is. It's it's like value jet used to be, and also this. It's, it's like value jet used to be. Well, that don't sound too promising. Well, not not in the fact that they're going to wreck, but just it's a lot of people on the plane. It's not like not because the stewardesses. Do they have like a clown outfit on, like uh, like the Foo Fighters? Not quite that bad. They're pretty funny though, actually. The uh, great. The flight attendants are hilarious. They're cracking jokes the whole time. Oh, that's great. That's I always love that when the flight attendants but, are laughing and puking and playing grab ass, you know, and the plane starts like diving and shaking. And listen, they're always on time. Uh huh. They're I've never, I've flown them probably 25 times and never been delayed or late. They always are on time. Mm -hmm. They don't have a first class. So they well, I, I love the way that the uh, Congress, they keep having these hearings and they keep threatening them. And you, you know, you've got to serve the public and you will do it. Yeah, I'm holding my breath. You know, they, they always uh, talk a uh, big game and make a lot of noise. And they don't do a goddamn thing to them. Aren't they the ones that want to deregulate everything anyway? They already did. That's why we got the problems. Exactly. They got themselves to blame. California power outage is the prime right. example. That's right. Hey, Dave's moving into your neighborhood. Yeah. Nothing could be better. No, that's what I say. I bought my house, and, and a gay couple bought the house across the street from us a month earlier. We moved in. I looked at my wife. I said, man, they need to do some work on that house. Within three months, people uh -huh. were stopping on our street staring at our house. Right. Or, excuse me, at their house. They should probably should have closed the blinds. No, I mean, they're just their house is beautiful. Uh -huh. Instantly. Exactly what you said. Plants, right. trees, flowers, paint. Right. It's unreal. Yeah. If you want to make a good real estate investment, find out where the gay people are moving, and you'll make big bucks. There you go. Theory. That's why they put those rail tra ra railroad tracks in the grove. That's it. Have a great Neil, day, pal. I love you, buddy. Take care. And you too. So he says Southwest pretty damn good. It's only 14 stops from here to, like, uh, Sarasota. That's not bad. It's a little bumpy sometimes on the highway. 567 with those wheels. 567-0560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. See, I, I know. I know that when you got a few bucks, that right away you can be a little more choosy. Not flying in coach. Not taking with, you know, with it. And people say to me, well, you know, when you fly to Amsterdam all these times, you're like, how many stops? There are no stops. Non-stop. So you stop in like Bermuda? Yeah, Bermuda and the Triangle. We No stops. 
I remember when I did that virgin scare a couple of times with that Bob Lincoln, you know, friend, whatever that guy's name was, that Brit, that silly ass Brit who continued proving to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Brits are full of Schmidt. See, and it's interesting. Because it turned out that the goddamn House of Windsor, the real name was Battenberg, and the people in Britain whose name is, uh, I gotta be careful now. What is it? Oh yeah, a lot of people, uh, their name should be Schmidt. Yeah. There's that German connection again. Because they're full of it. The silly ass Brits. Yeah, Virgin Scare. That's another one with Mike Myers, you know, with Austin Powers uh, painted on the side of the plane. Be very nervous about uh, airlines that have too much comedy, you know? Just like Bill Torrey playing too much comedy with that young girl. You know, same thing. Brains are going soft. His voice is getting hard. Is that His heart is getting hard. And so is his... 26 afternoon at Bowtie. Afternoon at 560 WQAM. By the way, Dwayne Sutter, the new coach, I understand he's an asshole too is what I'm hearing. Makes Terry Murray look good. That, that's the rumor that's going around now. I think Denise Potvin's starting that rumor. Yes. Probably wants his job. <laughs> a two-hour blowjob. Good morning. As I begin, I want to overcharge American taxpayers. My top priority is cost billion dollars of damage. My plan reduces new businesses, new jobs, and new growth at a time when we need all three. And on your behalf, I am asking for $2 trillion of debt over the next decade. Future generations should pay back money that we have borrowed. We owe this to our children and grandchildren. And now I hope you'll send a message in favor of death to your congressman or your senator. Thank you for listening. 1232 at 560 WQMC. The facts are just like I've told you. They're just like the callers. And once you humor them a little bit and read one, like this Rabbi Hirschberg. Hey, Rabbi Hirschberg, cocksuckhoys, okay? And quit wasting my fax paper. He was the one that wrote the facts about the gays movie in the neighborhood. That was okay and whatever. But now, now all of a sudden, because I read it on the air, now he's chronic. Here's another one. Uh, Attempt to be a humorist. Maybe you won't read this on the air. I've been listening to your show for several years. You keep George putting George down for his eating and George G E O for the G for his eating ass, etc. But after listening to his comments during your show, we've come to the conclusion he's a very well read and educated person. He has a vast general knowledge of many subjects and is well aware of what's happening in this city. If he traveled to Europe, he would be able to have a more well rounded viewpoint of world matters. Hey, if they don't stop the drilling, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna put on a tape. Do you know what I'm saying? Why, why is it always in the middle of this show? Why does this crap always have to go on, like right under my ass, right behind the door, right around the walls, right during this show? Cut the crap, you asshole! If he traveled to Europe, he would be able to have a more well-rounded viewpoint of world matters. Please give him a little more credit. We love him. Thanks. Signed, George's father. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I think George's father, if he were around here, you probably know how to spell his name. He's in L.A., actually in an Asian neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. See, he's out there. That, see, that's why you had that thing about those Asians. Now, I would agree with you. They destroyed Los Angeles, but those are mostly Vietnamese and Koreans. Yes, Japanese, that, but they're not destroying the neighborhoods. Oh. They're and what happened you know? on the phone here all of a sudden? I mean, I'm having my allergies today, but maybe the audience is too. Well, here's our last call. Mobile in Miami Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's up, man? Yes, sir, not much. Hey, I went to Amsterdam last year, buddy. I had a great time. Did a lot of blow and banged a lot of whores. What more do you want out of vacation, huh, Neil? Uh-huh. So check this out. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm visiting from Cleveland, okay? Uh-huh. And I asked blow? around the... I'm sorry? What is it? Yeah, I'm visiting from Cleveland. I asked around the hotel, you know, where can I go and stuff, so... Where can you go, go for what? Well, just have a good time. Blowing you know? whores. Blowing whores, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, well, no, just have a good time. And they said, you got to do the happy hour Wednesday nights at the Forge. Happy uh, hour at the Forge? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some good-looking women, good-looking guys, whatever you're, you know, what you're into. Yeah. Uh, go there. So I, I went, and uh, and sure enough, there was a lot of good-looking women and good-looking guys, whatever. Yeah. So I, I start drinking. I uh, hook up with this woman. We we had drinks. Mm -hmm. We uh, had dinner. Uh huh. Um, she's in marketing. This guy's almost supposedly. as good as that old guy with his uh, whatever he was talking about. What is it? She's in marketing, supposedly some magazine. I don't know, Ocean Drive or something like that. Uh huh. She works for Ocean Drive magazine. She's yeah. In marketing. Mm -hmm. So so we we 
had some drinks and dinner, and then she took me out to an, uh, another place. And is there is there an end to this story, sir? Is this going to be as excel like I said, as good as that one uh, that old guy that was on for about a half an hour? The, the, the end is what is the I mean, what is the end, sir? I was finally able to bang her, but I spent like eight hundred dollars. So from now on, I'm just going to go to Amsterdam. You know, yeah. for that kind of money, I could bang 16 hours, That's man. right. Okay. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you're learning, pal. Go back to Cleveland, okay? We can't stand you. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Yeah, it's, there's something in this room now all of a sudden. Because I came in this morning feeling extraordinarily well, looking chipper and beautiful. And now it's like i uh, got like a sty in my eye and it's uh, – I had to turn it down. It was about 20 below zero in here, Celsius. Huh? Well, you thought the Cox people were cheap about yeah. cleaning. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, I forgot the about the fact, you know, that uh, sick building syndrome, because we already know about the elevator and about the schmutz and about those 75-cent chairs and plants they got out there in that Maple Leaf lobby. So you can just imagine what it looks like in the vents in this joint. The receptionists take bets on uh, when people get into the elevator. Yeah, whether it's going to go up or down, in and out. And how fast. Here's a mobile in Coconut Creek. Hello. Yeah, hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I'm calling about the... Um... The neighborhoods. Uh, okay. the in Boca, they, the Jewish folks drove me out of Boca, the Orthodox people. They used to come through my neighborhood, and on a Saturday, if I was washing my car, they'd start looking at me. Uh huh. So yeah. when I did it, I wore shorts to let my nuts hang out. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, then I was good. And then, then right after that, you always go to, anyway. And yeah, then you go to the shoe store, yeah. Yeah, no, I moved out. So I, I wound up in Coconut Creek, and I wound up with a few hamster families there, which are nice. Uh huh. So I go from there. And the five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon Marlis line. We got four hundred and one votes on our survey. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? African Americans seem to be running away with it. Of course we do know they, they run fast. Uh -huh. One hundred and fifty eight, almost forty percent say you dark folks uh, destroy the hood uh, fast, real quick. Redneck sixty eight, trailer park trash. That's uh six seventeen percent. Orthodox Jews thirty five, eight point seven percent. They're busy laying to fill in. Haitians, 35. Tied with the Orthodox Jews. Cubans, 29. Ricans, 27. Jamaicans, amazingly, yeah, 25. Mexicans, 12. Gays, only 6. And Nicaraguan, 6. So let's get a gay Nicaraguan to move in there. Oh! And you, then you're safe. Yeah, maybe all the Nicaraguans you're talking about on Biscayne there, maybe they're like all uh, maricones. Could be. Yeah. Looked like families, though, when we were driving through. Oh, yeah, well, you know, put on a good show. Oh. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. I know a lot of people like that, you know. Here's a mobile in Sunrise. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Pretty good. Listen, uh, from years of experience, I find that nobody can wreck a neighborhood as good as your local Moleys. Yeah. You know, they are just really bad, you know, and they don't give a damn at all. You know? They don't give a damn about what? About keeping the neighborhood clean. Mm-hmm. You know, there is white trash, too, but uh, the moolies, I forget it. Uh-huh. That's all I really wanted to say. Have okay, I'll see you at the sawgrass mool. Sawgrass mool? Yeah, that's what I said. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Pretty uh, crappy crowd here all of a sudden. Getting real quiet. Had a dynamite week on this end, I'll tell you that. This show's been smoking this week. Smoking. Yes. The good stuff. Now I'm finding this. It's a good thing it's Friday. It's a good thing I'm getting out of here in a few days to go on vacation very, very soon. That's why you better call today because pretty soon George will be on there with Joe Costello talking about eating Dwight Lauderdale's ass. So if that offends you or anything like that, then uh, that's the way it goes. Of course, during those shows, I want to keep you know keep one thing in mind. Greg hates you. This is 560 QAM. Friday, you bastard. <laughs> We'll be coming down Fifth Avenue upon St. Patty's Day. Oh! A great day for the Irish all across the USA. What do you go? What is this I hear? This cry and ballyhoo. There's a bunch of queers again this year who say that Irish too. Oh, God loves the Irish, unless of course you're gay. If you are, you won't be marching upon St. Patty's Day. You can be a bum, a bucket of scum, sure, and that's okay, but you can't be Irish if you're gay. Now the order of Hibernian, both eminence is grey, have delivered this pronouncement upon the blessed day. Sure, a little bit of heaven fell and nestled in the sea. 
what you going straight to hell for homosexuality. Oh, God, loves the Irish, Mr. Portuguese. Yes. That was their pronouncement as the pipes begin to play. You can be a con, a mommy, a don. God loves you anyway. But you can't be Irish if you're gay. No. Oh, L. E S B I A N and S spells lesbian. Choose another women part I made with. Whom devil a man can ever get a date with? L E S B I A N and S we say. Oh, it's a shame that these games want to come out and march with us lesbians. No way. But just that Cardinal O'Connor. He showed us such a straight. The piles like the Kennedys that made this country great. We don't allow no Peter Pan the wedding of the green. And when we say up the Irish boys, that isn't what we mean. Oh, God loves the Irish as long as men are men. Except perhaps the leprechauns. We've never been sure of that. You can be stinking drunk and hurl and chunks will laugh it all away. But you can't be Irish if you're gay. No. No, no you can't be Irish if you're gay. No. Don't even try being Irish if you're gay. Not 45. How's Cardinal O'Connor doing? Anybody talk to him lately? No. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T Verizon Wireless Line. we got Jim Mad Dog Mandage right. coming along for Hank at 2. Geldy on game night at 6 from the Hard Rock Cafe. 7 o'clock, it's Panther Preview. Panthers against uh, Mario and Yarmer Younger and uh, Marty Straka. What do you say, Marty Straka? Yeah, I talked to Doug McLean yesterday at home, as a matter of fact. I said, hey, how's Marty doing? Don't uh, dick around with Ray Whitney the way you dicked around with Marty Straka. And anyway, it uh, looks like a sellout tonight because Mario's in town, not because anybody wants to see the Panthers no. or Dwayne Sutter. No. God. And Eddie Kay after the hockey game tonight. That's the agenda. Here's Miami. Hello. On the radio. Thanks for everything, Neil. That was lovely. God bless you, sir. We'll pray for you here. Thirteen to one at five six. You imagine Muff coming in here this morning talking to me about uh, NCAA basketball? What is that child thinking about? God, get a get a life. Get serious. Here's a mobile in Weston. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Pretty good. I just want you to know, uh, you know, like you're talking about, you know, different kind of people. I used to live in Sunrise, and boy, there's like old people. I don't know if that's a class or not. <laughs> you know, they don't, you know, like a bunch of them are rude and only trying to get in your. But they, but they don't. We're not talking about that. They don't destroy the neighborhood. Well, they don't let their true, property well, values go to crap. Huh? They destroy your life, but that's another <laughs> pool. Yeah. Well, I got you. Okay. Well, I just, you know, I, I, you know, it's amazing how there's certain kinds of people though. Just, uh, you, even, you know, being older, I'm. You know, yeah, old I'm, Jews. That's right. Yeah. Okay, sir. I just Have a to... great day, sir. Oh, you too. Zygazun. Old Jews will destroy your life. Oh! Not your neighborhood, though. They take good care, and they'll take good care of your stuff, too, even if you don't want them to. That's right. They'll stick their nose in it. They'll take your good care of your mail after they sort through it. 5670560, oh, pound 560, the word Yenta. Does the word Yenta come to mind? Yeah. yeah. In fact, we're going to be singing that song in the one to two hour, I'm a Yenta Telebenda. I'm a Yenta Telebenda. Remember that? Sure. Whatever the hell that means. Hey, let's not start with that Jew talk, okay? You said yesterday we're going to start pandering to the Goyim. You better get with it. Okay. Here's a mobile in Delray Beach. Hello. Yes, hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, Neil, I have a, a customer of mine that happens to be an old producer and an old friend of yours. Mm-hmm. His name is Ron Scavo. Who? Ron Scavo. He used to work with you at WNWS? Never heard of him. You never heard of him? No. Yeah, he used to work with you uh, many years ago. Let me say it again. I never heard of anybody by that name. Trust me. Oh, okay. Unless he was hey, going by the by... way, Neil. By the way, Neil, I heard um, Beasley is selling you station. Uh huh. I pick it up for about eight bucks. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, see you in the park this weekend. Trailer. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon Wireless line. Wow, maybe that's why Redneck is in number of second place, uh-huh. closing in. Here's a mobile in Hialeah. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes, sir. How's it going? I just want to say that I love your show. Uh huh. Long time listener, and I just got a friend of mine hooked on your show, and I'm dying for him to hear the one about Laddie and the bagpipes. Or You're if, dying. If there's a chance you could um, play it. You're dying for it. Yeah, I'm dying for it, man. I bet you he's dying for it. <laughs> okay, pal, you got it. Thank you. I'll bye I'll stick here your meters now. Okay, bye Okay, bye-bye. go wash it off, please. Hi there, boys and girls. Today, we've got a very extra special friend stopping by to show us all about something really special. Oh, 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 I see him at the door right now. Come on in, Mr. Big Mac. How are you, lady? Hey, brought by something I wanted to show you. Oh, I wonder what it, it is. is. It looks like looks like an octopus with a kilt on. <laughs> That's me bag, boy. Ooh, your bag? Hey. Oh, what? Can I touch it? Sure, go ahead. Ooh, ooh. Run your hands there. That's, that's soft. Hey, like really? velvet. Hey. hey well, what, what's this right here? That is my blowpipe. You, what, what do you do with the blowpipe? You blow on it, lad. You blow, you blow on hey, it? Hey, you put your mouth around it and you blow. Oh, can, can I do that? Hey, would you like to blow my pipe, lad? Oh. Can I? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Come on, lad. You, you, you've got to put your mouth around it, lad. Don't be afraid it's not going to break. Right, like, like this? Hey, that's a boy. Oh. Stick it all the way down your throat. It's getting bigger. Hey, oh. that means you're doing it right. Oh. What, what's this over here? That's me chanter. What's, what do we do with that? What you do with that, lad, is you put your both hands on it, you cover the hole, and you run your hands up and down the shaft. Real quick. Ooh, that's hey. Like that? hey, run your hands Ooh. up and down it there. Now what you want to do, laddie, is you want to blow on the pipe. You want to squeeze the bag nice and gentle. And then you want to run your hands up and down the shaft real quick. Ooh, like, okay. All that's together, that's all at the same time. Okay, here, here we go. Uh, good, laddie. <laughs> hey, that's good, lad. Sure. Uh, hey, good, laddie. Uh, Keep blowing. Blow harder, laddie. Harder. Squeeze the bag. Squeeze more. Yes, run your hand up and down the shaft. Quick, faster. Run your hand up and down back. Go. Go. Oh. 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 I've been doing your brain on my brain. Oh. 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 Do that again. After the catch of me breath, maybe. You know, that jerk two calls ago, I think uh, the worst thing that he did was build up our hopes. Eight bucks. I think he had the right asking price, but, boy, we're, only, we're praying. we got our fingers and legs crossed, okay, pal? They're going to sell this place to, like, a real broadcasting company or somebody even a close facsimile would be good. Or someone who would like to be. Yeah, somebody who would, like, aspire to be as opposed to being just, uh, like, in a sandbox. Five six seven oh five sixty pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, Neil. Uh, I was listening to the worst team this morning, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's it's kind of peculiar. You just brought uh, Straka up, and they were saying that when he was here, all he did was skate, 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 and never finished skating. Bull right? crap. That's a crock of crap. Yeah, that's what they were saying. That's Total crock of crap. I guess they forget the great year that we had when we went to the playoffs when they got him and Ray Shepard at the same time, and he was a big uh, factor in the Panthers having that big year that year and going to the finals. These people in the morning, they wouldn't know a goddamn hockey puck if you stuck it up Gildy's ass. I agree with you. Yeah, it was that little whining little faggot. That's what it was. Right. Saying that crap. Well, he's just an ass sucker anyway. You know, well, we got the basic elements. We got the core. Yeah, right. I got your core over here, Gildy, you little ass sucker. And in closing, I understand he's going to elope with Mike Caruso. Is what the bird on there? Yeah, he moved in where Rimmer left out. In closing, can you play the bit of uh, John Rocker about the Haitians? John Rocker? Yeah, that that uh, the pitcher for the Braves. Who the hell is that? Hello, Mr. Rocker. How you doing, there, queer boy? Excuse me. First up, sir, we will do the Rorschach test. Yeah, what they love when you roll your tongue like that, all your boyfriends, huh? Uh, excuse me. There? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the Rorschach test is uh, ink blots, as they say in English. And I will show you these ink blots, and you will tell me the first thing that pops into your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking. Okay, what do you think this is? Homo. Uh, and this? Lesbo. Okay, and this one? Infected Haitian. All right. How about this? Bobby Valentine riding the baloney pony. In 
interesting. Well, let's move along, shall we? Uh. Let's try some word association. I'll say a word, and you tell me the first thing that pops into your head. Idiot. No, no Mr. Rocker, we haven't started yet. All right, here we go. Dog. Anus. Cat. Microwave. The color blue. Queer. Uh, you know, John, why don't we try waiting a moment before you respond? Jerk. Mr. Rocker, I only wish to be your friend. Yeah, why you got me on this couch, Doc? You, Mo? What? You fat boy? John, I'm a married man. Sure you are. What's your wife's name, Chuck? No, actually, it's Gladys. Yeah, you're Gladys. It ain't out that you're a fat boy. I'm out of here. Woo! Why are you running? Stop, stop running, John. John, are you a wild thing? Do you make my heart sing? You guys, like a lot of our listeners, the accent kind of like comes and goes. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Yeah, it comes and goes, and the accent too. Oh, here the driller is starting again down there. Yeah, that's it. Crank that drill up. Crank up that uh, goddamn thing you got going. Sounds like you're either locked into the middle of a dental office or like, uh, God, this is a this is a crazy place. Right here in the middle of daytime, they got some guy doing a construction and drilling and sawing and hacking and puking and banging and popping. Yeah, go out there and see who the hell it is. Some kind of a goddamn moron. It's probably Matty Bell. He's probably drilling it. I don't see nothing. Or maybe somebody's back there drilling screw in. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. Rock buttheads. It's a one to two hour. When it's time to make some change. And he's forever. Oh, right. He's so cheap, it drives you insane. And he's forever. When he sees the check coming, he'll start to run. For the green pill, he'll start coming like a monster small. In just wallet, it can pay. He'll phone number if he wants the juicy steak. He knows the job is covered. So when it comes to doctor and he knows that it's free, bring your pennies for him because he's the cheese. When it's time to make some change, pennies for him. Make sure your pockets can pay pennies for him. You'll spend the fortune slipping this guy around. Make sure that your wallet is upside down. If you say that you can't pay, then Jeff won't bother. But you'll be your friend all day for around sixty dollars. So if you want this guy to go out with you to eat. Bring your pennies for everybody. Don't you leave? 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 Don't you it's so you're my friend, my friend, you're my friend. Get out of here, River. Not that you have to stop. Not that you have to stop. Yeah. Quit being such a suck hole. So anyway, you know, Fat Boy, remember the nice meeting we had with our client yesterday in here after the show? Very nice guy. Very nice guy. Great clients. Been on for us for years. So Fat Boy sends Miguel in here. And, of course, uh, I can see that he would send somebody else in here with it because he wouldn't bring it in. Takes the same fact sheet that the guy handed to me yesterday. And just retypes it double space. Remember all the information that we uh, talked yeah. about and all the mm -hmm. stuff that a real salesperson would have taken notes and put all those things, like copy points, so that I have something to talk about? Takes the exact same thing word for word and retypes it. So I give it to Miguel and had to stick it up Jeff High's ass, okay? And a copy to Miguel. Man, you fat piece of turd, you. You lazy, lazy, no count, shiftless piece of slime. Do a little bit of work, okay? Do a little something. God, what a... I, I, no comment. No comment. It's almost uh, the end. Here's Pompano Beach. Hello. 
Hey, Neil, I think misery must love company because the people upstairs here, the blue hairs, they drive me nuts. Yeah. They pound on the walls. Uh-huh. They drag stuff across the tile floor. Uh-huh. Okay, well, listen, I'm glad you're having a good time. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line. Our poll today, which group of people destroy neighborhoods the fastest? 461 votes already. And African Americans are leading the way with 187. How do you like that? Almost over 40 percent. 40 percent. So you darkies out there, you smokies, you ruin the hood like fast as uh, faster than you can say Aunt your mama. Redneck 76 trailer trash. They come in second so far. Orthodox Jews are this in third. Oh, 41. Haitians 38. Cubans 33. Jamaicans. Believe it or not, yeah, man. 30, tied with Ricans with 30. Oh, Jamaicans got much better weed than the Ricans, huh? Mexicans, 13. Uh, Gays with 7. But just like Salazzo, I understand the good would be a knife. And the Nicaraguans, 6. See, Nicaraguans and gays, they're the good people. They're the ones you want moving into your hood immediately. Okay. No? Well, the gays. What's wrong with Nicaraguans? Obviously, there's not enough of them for the people to get the uh, accurate picture. Although I think you just got to tell me that they're, you know, you talk out of every side of your ass. Well, some other guy called that up. The fact that your father sent before people. that was like totally unacceptable. The one that misspelled your name. I mean, uh, what do you? Before you were talking about what a great job they've I said done. I didn't know what those were. Yeah. Maybe I said maybe those. Are the and they're not Nicaraguans. But every everybody that I hear talking Ask, about. Ask uh, Miguel. He'll tell you. He don't know from Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Yeah, he does. Okay. He said they're real friendly and they uh, got a big ass. His roommate's Nick Rowan. And like he said, his roommate's real friendly and got a big ass. That's what he, that's what he just said. Correct him. Yeah, so what's wrong with that? You're just jealous of Miguel. Oh. 567, or is that me? 567 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T. So did you give that back to Fat Boy? And what did he say? What, he's not there? Unacceptable, man. Lazy, shiftless, fat piece of turd, Jeff High. He was a lazy, big, fat, no-count piece of turd at IOD, and he's a bigger, lazier, fat piece of turd here at QAM. Were you about to say liar, and then you stopped? And yourself? liar, and game player, and slider a player, and whatever else you fill in the goddamn word. Phony baloney. How's that deli coming, Jeff High? Guy comes in here and spends time, spent a half an hour with us yesterday, a super guy, a great client, and this guy, he'll flush it down the toilet, just like uh, just like Todd Dreck did with that Culligan's account. You can smell our sales department destroying a good account. You can smell it right in the beginning. And this is one I've had on the air for like 100 years, but you'll see. He'll kill it. He's got the touch of death, fat boy. That's why Scruan back there likes him so much. That's why he's still here. Shameless, shameless, shameless piece of turd you. Like you're fooling an old fag like me by taking and just re- having somebody retype the same piece of crap. Piece of copy, that's what we want. Copy and a fact sheet, fat boy. You slime ball. Low life. And by the way, we'll see you in Hialeah. You will? I won't. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing today? Pretty good. Today. Pretty good. Um, I got a vote for one. I don't think I've heard it before. The Seminole Indian neighborhood. It's, uh, I don't know if you drove by the turnpike. It looks pretty rough back there. It looks rough back there? I don't know. The Indians are right by Mommy's house there on uh, Sterling Road. They're, they seem to be okay. I mean, you know, those cigar- the cigarettes with the worms in there are a little bit tough. But I, I mean, you could see all from the turnpike, all the garbage. and the, Really? Oh, it's bad. Yeah, but we probably shouldn't talk about so, it. But that, why not? Because they've been victimized. No, no, I was, I was just about to say that. The blacks and the Indians, two groups that have been, uh, you know, picked on, now they're getting even with the white man. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Catcher I mean, sticks, gambling, that's, there you go. Okay, glad you're enjoying the neighborhood. And tell that guy out there to quit drilling on a goddamn wall. You idiot, you moron, we're doing a, try to do a radio show in here, or at least pretend to be doing one. And you're drilling and knocking and knocking and carrying on like some kind of a maniac. What kind of a nuthouse is this? What is uh, that? Copy will be done this afternoon. It came from the agency. Those are just the copy points. Just two pages. Copy points, the regular copy. Yeah. So where, so page. where is it? Where is it, fat boy? Where is it, fat boy? Is that fat boy? Yeah. Where is it, fat boy? Get with it. And by the way, Miguel ain't no messenger boy, okay? Stay the hell away from Miguel. He's not your lackey. He's not your house nigger, okay? 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. Where the hell is Muff? Is Muff out to lunch? Is he out to another three hour lunch today, Muff? Well, it's Friday. I mean, somebody's got to get a hold of this construction asshole here and tell him to cut the crap. Cut the crap, you idiot! Man. Just like Rodney Dangerfield, we can't get no goddamn respect. Just like Urethra. Nine minutes after one at 560 WQ. Maybe you'd like to send a couple dozen roses to Jeff High, our friendly sales guy, huh? Maybe we'll put something in there, like maybe La Bamba, Una Bamba. This is Joe Bowen, the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs. They don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Michael fell down into the crucial play, and he made a mess of all his plans. Michael fell down. It's not the funny game, and he made a mess of all his plans. Michael fell down. When he got up again, he made a beeline for the lake. Michael fell down. Have mercy, say I'm in. It was the live and shake and make. Michael is smiling at the he can't play basketball, he can't play baseball, he can't play foosball, he can't play racquetball. He killed the pig, and it looked like he was on crack. Now the pizza people say that it was fake. Michael fell down, he killed a crucifix, and he made it as a bolt in his hand. Michael fell down, it's not the funny game, and it made a mess of all his plans. Michael fell down, when he got up again, he made a beeline for the lake. Michael fell down, and where'd you say I'm at? One fourteen. What the hell's happening to my monitor? Are you doing that? While that bit was playing? I'm doing something to your monitor. Wow! Listen to that now. If the audience wonders what the hell's going on here, uh, your guess is as good as mine. We got a, a drilling guy. We got some kind of a runaway uh, a mechanic in the place. A hacksaw murderer in here. A lunatic. There he goes. That's it. Crank it up good, sweetheart. When in doubt, drill it out. It's, it's right under this room. Right directly below. If Mad Dog's listening, turn around and go home. You'll be sorry. This little girl walks over to her grandmother and asks, Granny, can you show me a magic trick? No, dear, but I think your grandfather knows one. So the little girl walks over to Grandpa and asks, Hey, Grandpa, Granny says you know some magic tricks. Could you show me one? Grandpa looks at her and says, sure, honey, just hop on my lap. So the little girl jumps on his lap. He says, now can you feel a finger poking your butt? She says, yeah, I do. He says, well, look, honey, no hands. That's kind of cute. Nice going, Grandpa, for an old fart like you. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line. Here's a call in Gainesville. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. How are you? Okay. Uh, just a couple of things. One, uh, I don't know if you've got any reports on this, but no. when Napster was going on, when Napster was in its glory, there were people who were putting bits of you from the old TV show. Yeah. And I got a, I downloaded something of you and the bird. Really? And you were talking, there was like the Godfather music playing in the background, and you were talking like in a voice, talking <laughs> about Meyer Lansky and the Archbishop with the blonde hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blonde-haired altar boys and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a thing from when you were on TV with Neil at night talking about masturbation. Mm -hmm. So you were all over Napster. Yeah, I know that. I was very impressed. That's why we couldn't sell a lot of CDs for our uh, Planned Parenthood this year because they were all downloading from Napster and making the burning copies and uh, stealing our stuff. Neil, yeah, I can hear that drilling. I'm 300 miles away. I can hear that drilling. From they can hear the drilling in Gainesville. How do you like that? That's how loud it is, you jackass down there on the second floor, wherever the hell you are in between the goddamn beams. I hope the guy's on the elevator and breaks a leg. Neil, around here, if, if you get away from the campus in one direction, it's all redneck, and one direction, it's all black, and one direction, it's all yuppies. So. Yeah. Well, I like to stay in this. Well, I think you know which way you want to go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we have lots of steak and shake up here. The chocolate shakes are... With the with the cherry and the whipped cream are outstanding. That's where it's at, the chocolate shake. And a triple steak. Now let burger. me ask you, the people the people are working the drive through in your steak and shakes up there, do they have any white people? Oh, almost entirely. There you go, I'm going to Gainesville. Oh! You can stay at my place now. Okay, pal, see you next week. Okay, get you get JP ready. Prime him up. And give him and shave his body, please. Five six seven, oh five sixty, pound five sixty. Oh, the drilling has stopped just for a brief moment here. The pause that refreshes. Ah, oh, God, it's great. 
But uh, can you hear that? He's he's like revving it up again. He's getting ready to. I think they're changing bits. Yeah, he's changing his bit. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, Twenty-three year listener, first time caller. Great. I've probably been listening to you since you were poor. Uh huh. <laughs> well, it's what goes around comes around. I'm I'm getting close again. Thanks to Mitch Hirsch, I'm, I'm right on the verge again. You mentioned a book about L-carnitine. Could you give me the title? Or I, you know, I, it's funny you mentioned that because I was looking all over the house for it last night. I couldn't find the damn thing. I'll, I'll, I'll try to bring it on Monday if I can find it. Oh, I, know, I know I've got it. I'll be listening. And I, and I started taking the L-carnitine. You know something? Now that you mention that, maybe that's what I'm allergic to because I took another one this morning and like I'm, I'm uh, maybe I'm allergic to it. I don't know. I don't know that much about it. Yeah. Well, the guy but that called the other day didn't either. You're definitely wrong about the Chinese. I'm wrong about the Chinese. I'm oh, wrong yeah. about the Chinese. Yeah, Chinese restaurants don't have any garbage. Yeah. And there's a lot of significance to that. And what does that mean? The way they treat their own people, who they bring under subscription to the United States, yeah, is worse than anybody treats any dog. Really? Oh, it's incredible. Huh? They uh, they work for two or three years. I don't know the time for food. And a mat. Food and a mat? Yes, yeah, a place to lay on the floor. That's my last name. Yeah. Sounds good to and me. It's incredible. I had a six year experience in Key West and I sold my house to them. And what they do is at first there's just a couple, uh -huh. and then very soon there's 20. And uh, the ones that are eligible for nicety get yeah. it. Well, I like the Chinese. I love the Chinese. And Chinese the ones, are great people. The They're ones that are people. under subscription. Yeah. Once they under subscription, what are they subscribing to? A Chinese Life magazine? Yeah, they're, they're, they're slaves World? for the... Okay, have a great day, pal. Get out of here. Make me sick. How do you like that? Don't call me. Call me another 23 years, okay? I'll leave you the number at Amsterdam. I'll still believe. And Cox Ahoy's. CB2. You ought to get together with that guy. You should trace the number. Get together with him. You can sit around and tell a nasty Chinese stories. Okay. All, all I can tell you, first of all, we don't have many Chinese. The only Chinese people I know here are the ones at the Emerald Coast, which are very nice people. Right. They don't have any slaves working there. They're not doing all of this crap, this guy. They don't have, have any subscriptions, prescriptions. And then, of course, all the Chinese people in Toronto, which there's zillions of them, and they're wonderful people. They're very nice. What must be all the Indonesians that they're talking about and all those? I don't know what about you're talking about, Gary, that you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, I just made it up. Chinese people have tr have uh, culture, man. They got like and, and they've got yeah. uh, right, and they've got morality. They got values. Edu Family they're edu values, they're right. educated. They're like intelligent. They're not yeah. morons. They don't destroy the neighborhood. They uh, keep up their property. That's what our, we're talking about here today. Yeah, right. What's that got to do with rhino balls? Because you're trying to put a different slant on it. So if they do have a small penis, what do you care? You're not into that anyway. Lately, no, I don't care. So Not there you fact. go. I don't either, as a matter of fact. Thank you for bringing that average down. I appreciate it. What? I want to thank all the Chinese people for bringing the average and down. And I thank them, too, because it makes me feel a lot better. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Here's Pompano. Hello. As a matter of fact, after the show, I just might go eat Chinese. Pompano, hello. What are they doing on this phone? Are they diddling on here? Gross. This is good. We might learn something on here. It's like heavy, heavy, heavy breathing. I mean, it must be in the must be in the toilet. Right? It's gone. Any uh -huh. snot on my nose? What is it? Any snot on his nose? Just look. Cat. Right on the end. Look. Yeah. Any snot on his ass? Take a look at it. Come on. It's not gross, just a little snot. <laughs> yeah, he thought it was gross, but it's not. <laughs> okay, well, Zach is going to have a uh, happy whatever. It's too late for Purim. There you go. That's what's going on in Pompano. You just heard it. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yes, how you doing, Neil? Okay. I want to cast uh, my vote for uh, the Haitians as the single most uh, devastating force that could possibly move into your neighborhood. Really? Uh, they have absolutely no social assimilative, assimilative skills. Uh, every re uh, every store they open up caters to only Haitian wants, Haitian desires. 
Uh, the average IQ in Haiti is uh, approximately Four. 72. Uh -huh. uh, the, the American Medical Association defines a borderline mental retardation at 68. Uh -huh. Uh, just well, overall, somebody who's a little them, bit above that. It's just just about borderline. That's what Madonna said. Yeah, uh -huh. they uh, they just uh, devastated. Just take a look at uh, Delray. Uh, well, Blake that market's Beach. not doing too good. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I just uh, they they're into Delray Beach. Yeah, Delray and Boynton. Oh, oh my God! I bet the old Jews up there are pretty upset about it. Yeah, they're probably uh, not too happy uh, campers. But mm. uh, they just uh, when one moves in, one family moves in, they use that as a beachhead, and they're like a pack of army ants uh -huh. uh, they just uh, are they still are they still throwing those diapers boxes out on the uh, sidewalk they get over that on the I, front lawn on, i've seen part on uh, neighborhoods in fort lauderdale you drive by and you can tell it's a haitian house because there's like some burnt uh animal remains uh with, uh piled up with flowers and other things. oh i forgot about some that part of their, uh, too, yeah. yeah some of the voodoo or whatever their uh tribe they, they bring the tribal collectivistic way of life over to and transplant it into our society remember they went 300 years uh, without any kind of Eurocentric uh, civil civilizing influence, uh -huh. so the French Toussaint Louverture, uh, you know, he he uh, beat the French army. The French retreated after the French took over from Spain, and then France left, and they've had nothing but their Afro uh, roots, uh, pretty much cooking there for 300 years. They've been so. cooking it. They've been cooking Afros, yeah. Right, cooking We're... each. Well, they cook each other with a necklace. Uh, you know, uh -huh. those necklaces. Okay, uh, well, like... listen, great. I think we. Uh, that's about as far as we that's need to know. Okay. South Africa. Uh huh. Depends. No, that's what's on the front lawn. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. So I guess you don't like Haitians too much, huh? No. Evidently, from what he said. 501 votes on this survey today. Boy, this is going over bigger than Halavan goddamn South Beach. Which group of people destroy a neighborhood the fastest? African Americans, 203. They got a, they got this licked. Rednecks, white and trailer park trash, 77. Orthodox Jews, 44. Oy. Haitians, 43. Cubans, 38. Jamaicans, 34. Ricans, 32. Me Mexicanos, 14. Nicaraguans, 9. And way down there on the bottom. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Gays, 7. They're on the bottom. Correct them. Some of them, like Ricky Martin. So there you go. Talk all you want about Maricon, but boy, when we come into your hood, we clean it up. We make it, like, valuable. We make it beautiful, pristine. Just don't look through the window. 26 after 1 at 560 WQM. Hey, here's something we can all agree on, a great smoke. Guess what I lit up yesterday? Maybe I'm smoking too many cigars. Huh? Maybe that's what's acting my allergies up. I doubt that. I just said that to get my mother aggravated. No, seriously, if you love a great cigar, Nick down there in Miami continues making some phenomenal smokes. I don't understand. I do understand. There are a lot of plastic assholes out there. That's why some people spend a fortune because they like the big names. You know the names I'm talking about? I won't even dignify them by mentioning them. Will you fudge back him? I gotta go pee. Ah, oh, yeah. You know it hurts, babe. Right here inside, you see, I've really got to go. Oh, oh, I remember you told me. Go before we leave, but now it's too late. I just can't wait. Every little thing I drink. Bottle candle from the sink. I don't want to wee wee again. I can't hold it in. Baby, please don't be mean. I'm turning green. Guess what? I've got to go pay. 131, what time was that? At 560 WQAM. So anyway, boy, I got one thing to say to you. <laughs> See, you know that that's a bunch of crap, because there's no way in the world he would have sent the fact sheet up here alone. Do you know what I'm saying? That was his intent to uh, stick that in here and hope that it would fly. You see what I mean? You see where I'm coming from on this? Do I? See where you're coming from? <laughs> yeah, talk, talk, talk. I mean, if somebody else had done that, maybe we would have bought it. Yeah. You're never going to change, fat boy. You're still the same game plan tub of crap, baby. Still the same big tub of garbage. How's that deli coming? Man tells his wife he's going to go out to buy cigarettes. When he gets to the store, he finds out it's closed. So the guy ends up going to the bar to use the vending machine. While there, he has a few beers and begins talking to this beautiful girl. He has a few more beers. Next thing he knows, he's in the girl's apartment having quite a pleasurable time. 
Next thing he knows, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God, my wife's going to kill me, he exclaimed. Quick, give me some talcum powder. She gets him some, and he rubs it all over his hands. When he gets home, his wife is up waiting. She says, uh, she's furious. Where the hell have you been? He says, well, to tell you the truth, I went into a bar, had a few drinks, went home with this blonde, and I slept with her. Let me see your hand, she demands. He shows his wife his powdery hand. She says, damn liar, you are bowling again. <laughs> well, I was there, you know, and I'll play it again. Here's Deerfield. Hello. Deerfield. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you today? Okay. Listen, I got a problem. I just went and I called Ticketmaster to try to get some tickets for tonight's Panther game. Yeah, it's all sold out. Yeah, I uh, I asked them if they had anything left. They said, yeah, we have some uh, Panther Pack tickets, mm -hmm. which I found very unusual. But That's so anyway, cool. I went across the street. I got a Sears uh, Ticketmaster outlet right across the street from where I live. Uh -huh. I go over there. <clears throat> this woman's sitting in the booth smoking a cigarette, this old raggy old thing. She tells me that the game is sold out. So we got in a big fight and match, and I told her to F off, and I walked out. Yeah. That was it. Okay, I well, I'd let you know. Okay, have a good time in the living room watching on TV. Thank you. Okay. Five six seven oh five sixty. Yeah, see, it's really a joke. It's sold out because Mario's coming, which he's been selling out games in arenas all over the league, which is why the league loves having him back. But it's still, you know, it's like applying a band aid to the Titanic, Gary. Gary Bettman. A little band aid on the Titanic with all these ridiculous expansion teams and all this watered down crap. And let me say it again. Don't get all excited about the fact there's a sellout there tonight. You can't complain about the hockey fans in this town because, generally speaking, with a few exceptions here and there, we don't have any. And I still think that kid read his stuff off a, uh, a thing, a roster. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Fort Lauderdale with a question mark. Hello. Neil, I want to put my vote on. Yeah, okay. There you go. Bad phony accent, man. Bad, bad one. Here's Kendall. Hello. Uh, Neil. Yes, sir. Yes, how you doing? Okay. Uh, I just wanted to, I just called uh, to make you aware, if you're not already, of uh, something you might be interested in. And what is that? Uh, well, I was in my local spec store last week, and what should I happen to bump into on the CD rack but the new album from Aerosmith? Right. Yeah, I, I didn't know if you if you were aware it was out or... or... Sure. Oh, you are? Okay, uh -huh. all right. I, I don't know if you have it or not, but it sounds a lot like, if I had to compare it to any of the previous albums... Uh, it sounds like a lot like the Get a Grip album, so I figured you might be interested in picking that up. Great. Yeah, so that, that's all I really wanted to let you know. Okay, thanks. In closing. Yes, sir. Uh, in my neighborhood, we have no Negroes. Okay. Okay, bye. Congratulations. Uh, I didn't say congratulations, did I? Oh, that was bad. That was just a slip of the tongue, okay? A slip of the lip. Good thing we haven't heard from that Finnish guy today. He, he had his quota yesterday. In my country, we have no Negroes. Yeah, we know already. Congratulations. Here's a lady in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi. Um, I just have a couple of comments for you. Yes, ma'am. One, one is if you want to live under a totalitarian government, then, yeah, you can have a great neighborhood, but that's why we have America and it's free, because we do have the freedom to make moral choices that may be not considered moral by others. I also have a quick comment. Well, well, have... well, well wait a minute. Well, go back okay. to the beginning again. Well, what did you say in the beginning? Okay, well, you were talking about how, how Chinese have morals and how they have their, you know, their streets are clean, and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you could have that here if you have the same type of government. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the Chinese in China. I'm talking about the people who come here and have a very high ethic as far as oh, okay. having their kids get a good education and uh, being hardworking and all of these. I'm, I'm not talking about China. I've never been to China. What do I want to go to China for? Well, yeah, I don't I hear you on that. I'm just you. No. But what I but I haven't misunderstood is your constant bigotry, which is very offensive. And I'm I'm a very con, I'm I'm a very well. Liberal. If, it, if I have constant bigotry, then why do you listen to the program? Excuse me. If it's very offensive, then why are you continuing to listen to the program? If you think I'm a um, bigot, actually, because I'm in a cab driver was listening to it. Uh huh. So you know, it's not like a choice. I, I understand. Well, well you, you said and just, just a you, just a you say you said constant bigotry. That means you must listen to it all the time. No, from the 30 minutes I've listened to it, all you've done is talk about Negroes, Haitians, et cetera, et cetera, which yeah. is rude. No, no, that, no, it's not, that's, not, that's not rude. This is what people talk about, man. This is like real life, not okay? The people that maybe, I hang out with. maybe in the world that you live in, in the little goddamn ivory tower that you hang in, nobody talks Excuse about who this you don't know what world that talk from, to ruins their neighborhood. You don't know what world I come from are, at are, all. Do you, you live in Liberty City? Liberty City, no. Do you live in Overtown? No. Nope. Opalaka? I'm from New York, baby. Do you, do you live in, uh, the, where do you live in New York? 
I lived in I was in twenty third in between second and third. In oh the really? Now how come you don't live like in the Bowery? I used to live in the Bowery. I actually used to live in Alphabet City. Uh huh. Why'd you get out of there? Because my boyfriend wanted to move to the East Village. I see. Well, listen, I got a suggestion for you. Go back there, bitch. I happen to live in New York City. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. In fact, maybe you can move in with Bubba. Uh -huh. Yeah, he likes it there. Here's a lady mobile in Cutler Ridge. Hello. What's up, my nigga? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Neil, I'm a proud black female, number one fan. And how, how do you like that last bitch? How that humorless bitch from New York? Well, she and the thing is, I'm from New York also. She is a damn nigger herself, and tell the damn well look up that word in the dictionary because she's ignorant. Uh huh. And my well, what word is that? Nigger or ignorant? <laughs> Both. Okay. <laughs> I want to put a vote in for French Canadians. Oh, ah, yeah, I forgot. But they don't really live here. They like hang out, you know. I know. Like but... on the beach, they hang it out. And I also want to tell you that people talk about how Jamaicans don't listen to you. I know one Chinese Jamaican named Clive who is a yeah, fan of yours. A Chinese Jamaican? Chinese Jamaican. His name is Clive, and he's also in Cutler Ridge, too. And huh. he is a major fan. All right. All right. He's probably yeah. got some really good crap, you know? Damn right. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. Have a great weekend, sweetheart. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. See you in the Bronx. Not a lot of Chinese in Jamaica for some reason. Uh, that's what I was trying to tell you. You know, well, there's a billion Chinese people. Uh, you're you're probably going to run into a whole... And then they travel in packs. 1.3 now. They travel in packs. Like when you go to Rome and you go to like a, to a trattoria, they bring them in in busloads because, you know, they're I'll on tours and way. whatever. No, it's got nothing to do with it. They're, not, they're nice people. Uh, let me ask you this. If you're in a goddamn restaurant in uh, Rome, New York, or wherever the hell you're at, Rome, Georgia, Athens, Georgia, wherever you're hanging out, and a busload pulls up, now, who would you rather have? 20 uh, people who are on, uh, visiting. 20 tourists get off of that bus. Who would you rather have them be? Chinese people, African Americans, uh, Puerto Ricans with switchblades. Who would you rather have them be? Orthodox Jews. I like Chinese. Let's play it. Where, where do we have that? Do we have that somewhere? I think we do have that. Probably on one of those mini discs. It's not in there. It's not? No. I want one of many discs. We have I like Chinese, but we don't have time for that. Plus, Rick would get all upset. <laughs> we don't want to do that. I think Rick's got a little Asian in him. Friday, you bastard. This is for you, honey. <laughs> Bitch. I had a chick named Kay. One day she flew away. To Tijuana, where the moon is blue. The moon is blue. But with our right wing censorship, there are words that mustn't slip. To truly tell you how I feel for K. So, if you see K in Tijuana, I'll see you in Tijuana too. All right. Now if you see Kay, tell her I miss her each day. And the FCC won't let me sing this song I wrote today. Now if you see Kay, take her hand, gently say, that after this transmission I'll be out in 90 days. Oh, if you see Kay in Tijuana, then I'll see you with Tijuana. Go, wanna go, but gotta see you with Tijuana. Go! So you have to ask yourself, what kind, assuming that the story was true, which I don't believe, but what kind of a normal or even close to normal, if there is such a thing, person would be getting like on a cab, and there's a radio show on the back, and be subjected to it allegedly for 30 minutes, which I can't imagine where the hell she's going for 30 minutes in this place, and uh, take the time to call up the talk show and express her displeasure. And like, we give a uh, crap of what the hell she thinks? No. I don't think so. That fucking bitch. Exactly. I couldn't say it better myself. She's giving me a song to dance. And you want to know why, honey? Because you're one of those obnoxious New York imperious snob bitches. That's what you are. I'm from New York. Well, great. That and 50 cents will buy about a half a cup of coffee at Tim Horton's Donuts, okay? The pastor was visiting a sweet, kind 80-year-old parishioner, and while she was preparing tea, he noticed on top of her antique pump organ a bowl of water in which floated a condom. When she returned, his curiosity got the best of him, and he asked, I wonder if you'd tell me about this, pointing to the bowl. Oh, yes, she replied, isn't it wonderful? 
I was walking downtown last fall, and I found this little package. The direction said to put it on your organ, keep it wet, and it would prevent disease. And, you know, I haven't had a cold all winter. Nice going, Grandma. They can't all be great. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, what's up, Neil? Yes, sir. Hey, those were two weak ones, by the way. Yeah, I know. Hey, like you said, they can't all be great. Yeah, they can all be a four-star. Hey, that girl, she's never been north of uh, Quail Roost Drive in Cutler Ridge, much less New York. Yeah. Uh, the people, the worst people to have living near you, uh, most of the time, just scumbags, you know, whether they're white or black or Cuban, mm -hmm. the people that leave their junk cars and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, that's mostly usually rednecks, the junk car crowd. It really is. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it, but it's like the redneck white trash people. <laughs> yeah. the worst. Why, why don't you want to say it? I mean, I mean, you, you know, gotta I don't call, want to, you got to call a state a state, state man. Ones. you got to I mean, call a state maybe a because state. because I've never had black people live near me. Yeah. You know, so I don't know about black. But, you know, really scummy, rednecky people are disgusting. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, tonight's my last game, Neil. Going tonight, I got my uh, my last game tickets here, and and hopefully by uh, by this time next year, things will be a little different. Tomorrow night's my last game. Are you going to go tonight, by the way, or are you not going? What is it? Are you going tonight, or are you not going to no, go? No, of course not. Uh, well... Yeah, I guess you should only go to see your team. That's right. Toronto That's Maple Leafs tomorrow night. That'll be it. Okay, have a great day, pal. All right, later, man. When they get new ownership in here, they want to make a commitment to the public and make it worthwhile going, and I'll go back. Otherwise, <laughs> to them, okay? Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Um, Long-time listener and frequent caller. Okay. Getting hammered here is from Green Beer. Leprechaun, <laughs> please. Can I hear Leprechaun? Yes, you can, as a matter of fact. And Brian Craig says hello. Like I said, no chance. Isn't that sad? Isn't that pathetic? Do you know who that is, Brian Craig? Yeah, and I know Little who that actually called. He was calling and marauding for a long time there. Apparently he got tired. I thought he had found a life, but apparently He was no. calling and marauding? Yeah, saying gay things over oh. and over again. Like oh, really? Off the air, yeah. Uh-huh. Involving Brian Craig. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. And now he's there with him, or is he just... Well, apparently enough? he was the whole time. I see. That's my theory. Well, you know, if you have enough of those green beers, you forget about all those other things, you know? Why would you be obsessed with someone if they weren't? Yeah, like you forget about that. Norm, and, you know, then you start thinking about your wife and your adopted black children, all, all these things. Monkey see, monkey do. I was talking to somebody about that the other day, about, you know, people who are just like little sucklings, little underlings. See, Mr. Ego has always got to have a, be surrounded by a bunch of those people, you know? If he takes a crap and it's like... Uh, Diarrhea, they got to go have instant diarrhea, too. Good thing we don't have anybody in this building like that. Right. Good point. So what's the morning one odds? It's 11 before 2 at 560 WQAM. That's very sad. All you gambling nerds in here, very tragic, you know. Hank and the 80K wannabes gambling away their hard-earned money. Well, like I said, I wasn't talking about Hank. No, I wasn't either. I said wannabes. Wannabes. Then who are you talking about? Oh, that wannabe. Well, oh, see, now we understand it's just a vendetta. Greg hates you. Yeah, that's why. That, that's a whole other story. Dumber than sawdust. 10 till 2 at 560. WQM, we got Jim Mad Dog Mandich. Yeah. He'll be along for Hank at 2. And then uh, the, the hockey stuff. You know the hockey stuff by now. One fifty five at five sixty WQAM. Greg poked his uh, head in the door there a couple of minutes ago and we said <laughs> get lost. One day uh what is this? Oh this is at uh, the beginning of this is screwed up. One day at home the wife is home alone and the doorbell rings. She opens it to a guy 
And he says, hi, is Tony home? This is very poorly written, whoever sent me from United Airlines. I appreciate it. But this uh, is weak. Hi, is Tony home? The wife replies, no, he went to the store, but you can wait here if you want. So they sit down, and after a while of silence, if the friend says, you know, Sarah, you have the greatest breasts I've ever seen. I'll give you 100 bucks just to see one. Sarah thinks about it for a second and figures, what the hell, 100 bucks? She opens her robe and shows one to him for a few seconds. He thanks her and throws 100 bucks on the table. They sit there a while longer. Then the guy says, that was so amazing, I've got to see both of them together. Together, I'll give you another 100 bucks if I can see the both of them together. Sarah, amazed by the offer, sits and thinks about it for a second and says, hell, why the hell not? She opens her robe and gives Chris a nice long chance to cop a look. A while later, Tony gets back home from the store. The wife goes up to him and says, you know, your friend Chris came over. Tony says, well, did he drop off the 200 bucks he owes me? Not bad. Not great. Not bad. Give it about a three and a half. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, uh, call from the cell phone. I'm a little farther north now. Uh, like your show. I don't get down to Miami much, but uh, good. Uh, I enjoy the topic today, and I wanted to share something with you. You yes, mentioned sir. earlier about uh, uh, blacks and Indians uh, screaming victimization all the time, and I've got a case that I have I, to share I, I, regarding I, 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 didn't, I didn't say that, sir. Uh, I did with, not with, say that. I didn't say screaming victimization. I said now they're getting even. Well, you said. mentioned that uh, some of them are going to be a victim when uh, no, that uh, isn't what I said. several Indians. Anyway, I, I, I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, that isn't what uh, I said. I, I live in Central Florida. Let me Florida. say that. That isn't what I said. Go back to Central Florida. Go away. We don't want you here. How do you like that? See, there's nothing worse than putting words in my mouth. I've had many things in my mouth, but words that I didn't utter, that ain't one of them, you know? Nobody wants that utter in their mouth. Here's a mobile somewhere. Hello? Hello. Yes, How sir. Okay. 